Sure, sure. Uh, so last time you guys uh, had downtime. Uh, Hypatia worked on her student loan debt. Um, that was that was what she did. Um, and then there, very, there was so much. Pathetically. Yeah, there was a lot that happened that uh, is too much to recap. But essentially, uh, Astraeus made um, discoveries about his past. Uh, Talus made discoveries about. Um, his or their um, current um, life-bearing situation. Um, Phil learned more about the dynamics of his very complicated family um, and also found out that the same dragon who has stolen his mother has also stolen um, the materials that were needed to make Pythor's ultimate weapon. Um, Anastasia uh, learned a lot about... Um, her phoenix, which she did not even know was a phoenix at the time. Um, and Reset trained uh, her buttskis off. Uh, the party recruited uh, the cruel cumber um, actress and aspiring bard known as Susan Pickleman. Um, unfortunately, they brought this plant creature to a frosty mountain range uh, where she died. Uh, through some weird plot stuff that I don't remember, um, Kyra came back from the dead and replaced Susan Pickleman uh, on the roster. The party then arrived at the location of the um, Golden Ram, wherein uh, a deal was brokered between the Ram and the party that it wanted their golden apple, and it was willing to be sheared, or shorn, sheared, yeah, um, in exchange for the apple. Uh, that offer was declined. Um, so a wager was made that they would have a quote-unquote friendly yet epic sparring match. Uh, the winner take all. So the ram would keep its uh, fleece and the apple, or uh, the party would keep the apple and the ram would give up its fleece. Uh, either way, it's been promised that everyone will walk away from the fight mostly intact. So that is where we left off. Up in those mountains. All right. As you prepare for battle, um, Kyra, who has been translating the celestial conversation for the um, NPCs who don't speak celestial, um, she does. Uh, she does mention that um, it's a shame there's not a cliff nearby um, because that is actually the weakness of rams. Hmm. I have a feeling that joke went over my head. Oh no, I, I was, I was like, kind of like subtly setting it all up, waiting for someone to be like, "Oh, Kyra, what, why? What is there? What is? Why is the cliff their weakness?" But I could see everyone's preoccupied slash freezing to death. So it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's fine. Anyways, um. I will uh, be over here with Team NPC, and we will record your great battle. Hey, I'm not Team NPC. Oh, right. Get in there. Get in there, champ. <laughs> Make it happen. Yeah, you, you too, Killa. There you go. All right. Uh, can I, can I preemptively... <laughs> I, I want to preemptively cast Mage Armor. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah can, sure. You could preemptively cast Mage Armor. Those can drink the potion of heroism that Astraeus gave him. Mm, okay. Alright. Um, now, the Ram has uh, spec 
specified that this is a come as you are, um, but he will not flee the battlefield. Just no matter how powerful you prove to be, he will fight it out. So, um, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess that's that. Everybody ready? Just waiting for the. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, I rage and I'm ready to begin. Bow. <laughs> I bow to the ram. Okay. <laughs> Go into right. a rage. <laughs> the ram uh, has a zero. No, the ram needs to roll initiative. There we go. Why is the ram got two initiatives? Whatever. There we go. There's the gong. Ah. <laughs> I think we've got it now. Yeah, not being able to like lean on uh, Groovy One lately is uh, frustrating for hockey or typing it, or whatever. It sounded fine. Yeah, I mean, we're, I'm trying it again tonight, but like, uh the last couple times where I've had to not use it is yeah. Does it just stop on you? No. It's again, they just there's too many people using it. It's part of the problem. Doesn't help. I made a video encouraging people to use it, so maybe I did this to myself. <laughs> um, uh, all right, so starting things off, uh, reset. Hello, reset. You just You're keep, just lighting keep hearing up a, you just a beep. Yeah, just keep hearing a beep every time you try to talk. Yep, still happening. Do you want to type it in? What you want to do? To roll twenty chat. Uh, testing. Okay, we can hear there you. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, new computer. Um, so the ram is okay with us attacking now, right? Yeah, you guys are fighting. Battle yeah. starting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I will. Um. You know, I have this. I have this bow. I might as well use it. Okay. I'm going to sh take out the short bow of cupidity, mm. and I'm going to shoot it with it. Okay. Uh, nineteen. Uh, nineteen is deflected by the creature's golden fleece. Oh my! I am going to. <laughs> is this a rock I can hide behind? <laughs> uh... <laughs> It is a rock that you can hide behind, yes. I will hide behind the rock. <laughs> okay. And duck behind <laughs> and say, Oh, this, this is going to uh, this, this is gonna be a tough one. And I'm gonna put the bow away. Okay. Uh Philippocles, he who holds the golden apple. What are you gonna do? Um, yeah, Phil is just gonna grab uh, his greatsword, and he's gonna just fly at him the ram Superman style, five feet off the ground, and he's okay. gonna be like, Your fleece and the apple will both be mine, and I'm gonna bonus action grab onto his horns. Okay. Uh, let's see... Uh, he says no. And I'm gonna attack it. With okay. My... He's gonna roll a 20. Real great sword. I don't know how to... I'm, uh, prophesying his, uh, 20. Oh, if I'm not mistaken, if you remember, it, it can't be damaged by weapons. You're prophesizing a nat 20? Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, alright. If... That is the case. Let me check the critical hit card. Let's see. 
Is somebody like joining and leaving or something? Or? It it's it's me. Oh it's, okay. Are you alright? Yeah, no, it's it's every now and then just like audio cuts out, and I it's I think it's my setup. It's not. Ah uh, okay. Yeah. So I have to like leave and rejoin. Oh wow. Um. Okay. Uh. Quadruple damage. All right. As you um, uh, as you go to take off his head. All right, uh, so it's a 20, I'm going to roll, and then I'll add 2d6 to it. You'll add uh, 66 more, because it's quadruple oh. damage. Okay, I'll roll, I'll add 6. All right, so that is a total of 33, right? Yeah, I think that's about right. Okay. Um... Okay, 33 slashing damage. Uh, the creature's uh, fleece and horns uh, just sort of deflect a lot of the impact of this incredible critical hit. Um, it does take damage, though. Mm. All right. Uh, it is resistant uh, to this magical mithril blade, uh, but not immune. All right, anything else from Philippocles? Nope, that's all. All right, the uh, creature is going to begin its turn. It gets the bloop, bloop, bloop of legendary action points. All right, uh, let's see. Mm hmm Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that works. All right. Um... It is going to uh, let out a mighty bleat. And as it does, uh, the sun comes out from behind a nearby cloud. Well, I guess it's not nearby, but a cloud that was near the sun. Um, a shimmering ray of golden sunlight comes down and hits uh, the ram. I need everybody... Uh, to make dexterity saving throws. I will give Reset uh, advantage to this because she is hiding behind a rock. All right. Uh, so this is its gleaming cloak. Uh, basically, you got to get a DC 16 or higher or you're blinded forever. Oh! Right, something's up. My whole character sheet's wonky. All right. Over here at the south, you hear several NPCs cry out uh, that they are blind and they cannot see. All right. Uh, then it's uh, going to use a bonus action to uh, pop over into the ethereal. All right, Hypatia, you are up. Okay, so I'm blind. All right. Can I... Skilla is not blind. Correct, yep. So can I just use Skilla as my eyes? If you'd like to enter that special state of seeing through your familiar, you can do so. That's part, so, of, a, part of familiar, right? Yeah, so if... If I were able to do so, um, would I be able to, like, see to cast spells? Uh, I believe so. When you're in your trance-like state, you just can't... You don't have any of your own senses, you have its senses. I think you okay. should still be able to cast some spells, yeah. Okay. I know there's a very popular and very sexy character on uh, Series 2 Critical Role that uses uh, his familiar to be a sexy blind spellcaster. Um, okay. for, for these purposes, sure, we can, we can go with that. Okay, so uh, I'm going to cast um, this on Philip, please. All right. Because we're not in a small, enclosed place. All right, fair enough. Bloop bloop. You get nice and big. Nice. 
All right, you are concentrating on that, yep. uh, making Phil big. Got it. And that is all I got. Okay. Um, as your turn in, creature is going to use uh, a legendary action point. Uh, all right, that brings us to Astraeus. Um, uh, Astraeus is going to cast Bless, and he's going to bless uh, Talus and Reset and Anastasia. And that is all he's got. Uh, I guess the only other thing he will do is he will try to move. Uh, I mean, there's snow here. Did we see, like, any tracks? Like, did this... Oh, no, the ram disappeared into the ethereal. Berg. Uh Astraeus is going to move closer to him. All right. All right. That's, uh, that's all I've got. Okay. Sorry about that. I had a disconnect. What uh, the dexterity save? What happened with them? Well, it looks like you made it. You got a 24 and 25. Okay, I wasn't sure if it came through or not. I apologize. Oh yeah, no worries. Um, people who got six, uh, 15 or less, are blinded forever. Wow. All right. Okay. Uh, that brings us to Soul. She's just gonna fly up a little bit and dodge. Okay. Uh, Talus. Um, we are going to hold our action to attack the ram when it appears. All right, fair enough. Uh, Anastasia, you're um, up. Same thing. I got nothing. <laughs> I give up. I surrender. Uh, who's <laughs> next? <laughs> uh, all right, Skilla, um, providing um, sight for your master. What do you do? Um, I am also. Uh, she's gonna fly up next to Philip, please, as well, and ready a help action. Okay. Alrighty, that brings us to reset. Top of the round. Uh, yeah, I'll also ready a shot with the with the bow. Okay. Uh, Phil, you're up. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna ready and attack. All right. As your turn ends, uh, you hear um, the sounds of hoofbeats uh, and the creature. Uh, appears back from the ethereal plane and is in mid charge towards you. So it just kind of charging up. Uh, okay. we'll go so. there. There we go. All right, yeah. So those of you who are waiting with an attack, now is your chance. You got well, one. Whoever, whoever goes first, I guess, and will get advantage or well. Actually, probably Phil will get advantage because Talus and Reset will go before. No, Reset will get advantage because. Okay. I don't know. Then it's yeah, 25. the other, the others, yeah, the others held actions would go off first. Gotcha. Yeah. So Talus, go ahead and take your uh, held action. Woohoo! Glad I had advantage. All right. Uh, and you had advantage because Ranger stuff. I thought the first one to attack got advantage. The first one after Skilla would have advantage. Oh, after Skilla. Okay. Yeah. Yes, All right, so the Chakram uh, flies across the icy expanse, uh, hits the wool. There is a flash of brilliant golden sparks, and it returns to your hand. Uh, let's see. That brings us to Skilla, who uh, f I guess is going to pester it. Was that the like, plan? Yeah, like like as it uh, charges Phil, just fly like right into its face. So sure, it sure. Okay. Slightly outside of action economy, that's fine. Uh, it sounds it sounds cool. 
Um, all right, so that brings us to Reset, who is holding an action. You can now take it with advantage. Yeah, I got 28. 28? I rolled it. Oh, okay, you rolled it already. Uh, that is a hit. It takes eight points of damage. Are you activating the ability? I will. Yeah. All right. I'll... All right, the creature uh, got to make a wisdom saving throw here. Uh, it passes. It makes it, yeah. All right. Um, its attack it is aimed for Philippocles. Uh, so here it comes. It is using a, a stunning ram. Uh, 19? It hit. All right. Um, as it hits, it also activates charge. You could do it, roll 20. So it's going to do an extra 15 damage on top of the 17 bludgeoning and 3 force damage. So does the extra 15 count as bludgeoning? Uh, yes, it would count as bludgeoning. Oh. Okay. And then you got to make a dexterity saving throw, or sorry, strength saving throw of 16 or be knocked prone and stunned. I make the save. And now okay. I'll take the damage, so 32 plus 3, the 32 is half. Okay. Alright, and then of course the bloop 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 of its legendary actions refilling uh, Hypatia, you're up. Okay, I'm, uh, let's try... Okay. Now, let's... Okay. I'm gonna chuck a chromatic orb at it. Ooh, okay. Just first level. Uh, yeah, yep, yeah, one. There you go. Oof. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. You as you chuck it uh, over there, it is hard to throw from this location while seeing from that location. Uh, it, yeah, the ball, the ball just kind of goes crackling, shimmering uh, off into the distance. Uh, all right, that's uh, that's it. Okay. As your turn ends, the ram is going to use a legendary action. Uh, to use its discharge ability, which sounds kind of gross, but uh, it releases the static electricity it stores in its wool. So here we go. Wow, that is like, what, minimum? No, not minimum, but pretty bad. Um, okay, so everybody within 10 feet, you need to make dexterity saving throws uh, to try and avoid the damage and paralysis. Oh. I'll use my uh, DM inspiration. Okay. All right. It. And a uh, little Skilla has to do it as well. Oh, Skilla did. did. Okay. I made it. Uh, so Skilla takes four damage uh, and is still going. And has only five HP, so she <laughs> go run away. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Because otherwise mom can't see. And All right. Spells. Astraeus, uh, you're up. Uh... I will attempt a chaos bolt on him. Oh, that is not how I meant to do chaos bolts. This is how I meant to do chaos bolts. You're gonna do this up close? Okay. Um, yeah. So, it doesn't hit. Yeah, it does not hit. Oh, that would have been nice damage, though. Oh. <laughs> uh. And then, uh, that's all I can really do at this point. Okay. Um, the ram is going to use, uh, a legendary action to disengage. All right. Soul, you're up. Uh, same thing. Just dodging. Okay. 
All right, as Soulfish is turn, it will use its last leisure action to uh, sprint. So it is going to move back uh, to right about here. I'm going to use my Sentinel on it. Okay, because even though it, even though it's disengaged, you can still do that, right? Yeah, with Sentinel, yeah, you can. Okay. And uh, uh, da, 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 da. oh, okay. I need your. Now oh, you are a, you are a warcaster, right? I am a warcaster. Okay. Yeah. So I was just gonna ask, could I combine the Sentinel uh, because it disengaged with my warcaster and try and cast like Booming Blade on it or something? Yeah, you can. I think that works. I will attempt it. Uh, so, the attack roll. Uh, Hail Mary. Mary did not uh, come through this time for me. I missed. Uh, then, yeah, it will uh, run this way and then just kind of like skid through uh, the snow. You see as it runs, um, it doesn't leave like tracks. Uh, it is like it's floating just above the snow cover. All right. Uh, that brings us to Talus. Okay. We're going to start with uh, Paratos. Going to try to... Sc- oh, wait. Disappeared. Um. We'll have to move up. And we'll throw the chakra at it. Okay. Actual bonus action, Hunter's Mark at first. All right. It's within range of Hunter's Mark, yeah? Oh, shoot. Uh, yep, 90 feet, so yeah. Okay. Alright, so it is marked. Alright, go for it. Oof, yeah, that is definitely going to be a hit. Uh crosses the distance, skids along the creature, um, there's a spray of metallic blood, and it, uh, wins its way back to you. Awesome. Alright. And, um, Paratos will f- actually fly towards and screech at it. Okay. Alright, Anastasia, you're up. Um, I'm gonna continue to fly blind this way, which is super dangerous. I'm gonna tr- I'm dropping to the ground, trying to find some cover. Oh. Okay. I'm going to cast uh, Lester Restoration on myself to end the blindness. All right. But uh, I'm gonna keep my eyes closed. <laughs> okay, you're gonna keep your eyes closed. Got I'm it. Take some cover over here. That's it. There's the uh, piercing screech. Okay. Stimfe emits a piercing screech directed at one creature. It's going to make a constitution save or take psychic damage and be deafened. All right. Uh, here we go. I know it's not much, but it's probably the best thing he can do. <laughs> uh, he passes. Yep, figured. All right. Uh, Skilla is up. All right. Skilla is just going to fly back towards mom. Okay. Nest amongst the other snakes in her hair. Reset, you're up. Uh, are these rocks t- like about 10 feet high? Um, ish, maybe. En- enough for cover? Yeah, they're enough for cover. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna run out and I'll say, um, use, use the rocks so it can't just charge at you. And I will shoot it from over here. Okay. Uh, 28 for 10. That is a hit. OK, 
Okay, and then I'll hide behind this area again. Okay. Uh, Phil, it's you. Um, yeah, I'll take, uh, can't quite reach the rocks. I'll head over there. And then I'll, uh, pull out my javelin of lightning. Mm. I don't expect the lightning. But... And I will scream Pythor and throw it at the beast. Okay. As you throw it, it, um, strikes the target. Um, or at least tries to strike the target. Um, and as it hits the ground, uh, near the creature, uh, there is a discharge of, uh, electricity from you to the, um, the javelin as a brilliant bolt of lightning, uh, appears. All right. Uh, it's over here somewhere, I guess. Yeah. All right. Cool. Anything else from Phil? Uh, no, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, that brings us to the ram. Uh, you hear the bloop, bloop, bloop of its legendary action points uh, coming back. Here we'll... Oh, I was going to drop this, but that is so much cooler looking. This one actually looks very chonky. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. What is this ram going to do? Um, hmm. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Astraeus, it is going to charge you. <laughs> Bring it. All right. All right. Here we go. Uh, 23. Uh, 23 will hit. Okay. Uh, then it gains the benefits of its charge. Uh, and it's uh, attack. There we go. For a total of 32 damage. Okay, so I'm down even if I pass this. I'm just down. Boom. Alright. Uh, let's see. And that will be the ram's turn. It can only use its bonus action to do ethereal jaunt, so it's just gonna, it's gonna hang tight for now. Um, alright, that brings us to Hypatia. Okay, I'm going to, uh, let's see, move, yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna move up to here, just like 20 feet, um, and I'm gonna cast Sleeping Graft on it. I fully okay. expect it will not go all the way to sleep, however... Will at least do its thing. I'm sure it has more than 44 points, but it does. Uh, all right, what is the side oh. effect of it? Okay, so it uh, it becomes drowsy. Its speed is halved. It can't take reactions, and it can't take more than one melee or ranged attack during its turn. Wow, this is like no saving throw. Well, it's until it takes damage. Oh, okay, until it takes damage. Got it. Yeah. Best spell in the game. Yeah, there's and, there's, a, there's a couple of groups of uh, running Odyssey that may have banned that spell outright. That's fine. Aww. Um, yeah, but it's cool. Uh, all right. So yeah, no, it is. It's feeling it. it's feeling a little sleepy. It's feeling a little yeah. sleepy. All right. Uh, let's see. It is going to. Um, with a crackle of electricity, uh, it is going to discharge, uh, onto your boy on the ground. Um, uh, dealing... Now it's just yeah. trying to kill me. Yeah, doing 18, so it's a failed death save, because technically not a melee attack. Um, but since you are unconscious, you fail the deck save automatically, so you um, are double paralyzed, or you're paralyzed and stunned, I guess, um, until the end of the creature's next turn. All right. Uh, that brings us to Astraeus, saving throw against death. Also, I think the bless would end, right? Because he's unconscious. So. Correct, oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Bye bye, bless. All right, that is two failed death saves on Astraeus. All 
right. Uh, let's see. That brings us to uh, Soul. Yeah, I'm just gonna dodge. I'm gonna take it out of the initiative order so it stops giving the ram legendary actions. So I'm gonna poof her out. Oh. Next turn. Okay. But, yeah, just dodging. Can't do anything. Okay. Uh, let's see. That brings us to. Uh, I think it wants to try to eliminate some threats here, so it is going to go ahead and try to finish off Astraeus. Uh, so, with sort of a, a crackle of electricity, uh, that'll be the end of Astraeus. Talus, you're up. Okay. Uh, we'll start with uh, Paratos coming back and screeching again. Okay. It will try to make a constitution save. Damn. Almost. Mm. Yeah. That was a one and a two. Um, all right. And then what else, Talos? And then Talos is actually going to try using Thorn Whip against it. Okay. Uh, what is the reach on Thorn Whip? 30 foot reach. All right. Go for it. Uh, yeah, it does not hit. But this will be the first time you guys will have seen that, like, vines sprouting from his arm and whipping. Sweet. Very cool, Talus. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that brings us to uh, Anastasia. Man. Uh, until it takes damage. Hmm. Can't heal, Astraeus. Hi. Uh, can't do anything that would just damage it. I will we'll just dodge. No, I mean, you can damage it. Like, we'll have to. Yeah, I like, mean, can, you either, yeah. You can't it, kill it, it without damaging it, so. <laughs> right, right. I mean, just go ahead. I don't want to waste the spell. Um, okay. I will, I will just, um... Uh, sacred Flame it. That's gonna okay. make a deck save. 14. Deck save. Uh, it fails. Uh, it takes four points of radiant damage. Um, I, I guess, yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, as your turn ends, it will use its last legendary action um, to move. Uh, and it's just going to run over to here. There we go. All right. Uh, Skilla. Uh, just hanging with mom and dodging. All right. Fair enough. Uh, that brings us to reset. Get out of the open. I <laughs> yell as I run up this rock. Um, uh, I think it's too far. Uh, no, it's it's in reach, so I will shoot it with the bow. Okay. Uh, does a twenty hit? It does. As easy as twenty, guys. Uh, for <laughs> six piercing. All right. And then I will. I guess I'll move down here, so I'm out of sight. Okay. But still on the rock. And I'll just say to uh, Phil, if if you can get it close to us and we can try to corner it in these rocks, maybe. All right, Phil, you're up. Yeah, Phil's going to go into these rocks taking Reset's advice. Okay. And um, he's gonna use his action to intimidate. Uh, he's just gonna scream from the rocks. You must fight me! If you stay and hide, we will just wait for you. We will get your fleece. You are bound by oath. Okay. The uh, creature kind of cocks its head at you, 
like the fuck you just say uh as it kind of like looks over at you from across the frozen river all right anything else from phil uh no it's all all right uh you hear the bloop 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 of legendary actions uh the creature pause <laughs> pause the ground is soul still here or did you say you sent soul uh, back to pokeball yeah yeah uh, she was up like 30 feet yeah i wanted to send her back though so. oh, okay all right uh yeah it pushes kicks off the rocks and charges you uh it approaches at uh maddening speeds uh here we go you are you are flying though, right? Or did you land? I, I wanted to dive into the rocks over here, so I'm not flying anymore. Okay, fair enough. All right. Uh, as it comes pounding uh, across the the air, as it were, it's uh, it's gonna try and ram you. A twenty-two. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, as it does, it's. <laughs> slams into you for 36 points of damage uh, and knocks you down. Uh, there's an explosion of rocks and snow as it uh, kind of slams into you and just keeps uh, running uh, over you. All right, as it skids to a stop, uh, there's just a spray of snow uh, in Phil's general direction. All right, that is the end of its turn. Hypatia, you're up. Okay. Um, I think we're kind of in go big or go home territory, so let's just do a second level chromatic orb. All right. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, like, be like, okay, this is it. And I'm basically gonna, like gather up like a tiny snowball like I'm gonna start a snowball fight but it's a chromatic orb of cold damage fair enough <laughs> it, empowered by the dope ass uh, what 150 no it's 50 50 gold piece diamond for chromatic orb right yeah, uh, yeah. that you, you got in that engagement ring you never gave back huh no, uh, it's, no. It's, it's, in, it's in my little forehead gym there oh right 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 that makes yeah. more sense yeah. how does the chromatic orb look Hypatia well, sorry, in this case, sorry, it's guys. Like a, like a, a giant snowball. How, okay. how cinematic is that chromatic <laughs> orb, Hypatia? Yeah. This yeah, is the good. first. This is the first cinematic chromatic orb cast by Hypatia. So yes, uh, your snowball chromatic orb uh, will do cold damage unless you are totally against that idea, no, and have damage. and have a plus two uh, to hit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, that and plus two to hit. Oh my gosh, that makes it a twenty-one. Uh, the creature is biffed upside the head for 13 <laughs> points of snowball damage. Uh, and, and it kind of lets out a, like, bleat of laughter as it sort of <laughs> shakes the snow loose from its, uh, beautiful and resplendent, uh, fleece. And I'm gonna go kind of try and hide behind the rock. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> Alright, as the your turn ends it's uh wool crackles with lightning and it discharges electricity uh anastasia gotta make that save it gets the uh paralyzation and the half damage paratos uh also taking damage from that oh i was already stunned um Oof. Just all right knock. i mean i'm already i'm already knocked out so like, yeah okay <laughs> who cares All right, condition stuns. Uh, yeah, automatically fail strength and dex saving throws. Okay, uh, so you are paralyzed and stunned and prone and bloodied. Uh, all right, and at zero. Uh, Astraeus out of the fight. Talus, uh, you're up. Okay. We are going to uh, run up. I should say move over. Mm -hmm. 
and we are going to cast Cure Wounds on Hypatia. Oh, no, uh, Yeah. Okay. okay. Fair enough, fair enough. I guess I will make that save then. Um, what was it, deck save? Well, I already failed it, it so was, I'm paralyzed. Yeah, you ought to, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. All right, so you, your eyes, your eyes don't open because yeah. you said that you weren't going to look at it, but you realize that you are alive, um, but your whole body is seized up by seizures and electricity. Until the end of my next turn, until the end of the ramp's next turn. Okay. All right. Talus, uh, the ram kind of cocks its head at you. Uh, curious. Anything else? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a second attack yet. But, okay. uh, Anything I, for Paratos? Well, I attack at all, but uh, Paratos will split out another screech. Okay. Let's see what we got. Uh, the uh, okay. makes it safe. All right. And he'll fly away. All right, Anastasia, you lay there having a seizure on the ground. Okay. Uh, Peritos, you were up high in the air, yeah? He was about 30 feet up. Okay, fair enough. All right, uh, Skilla? Uh, just hanging out with Mom and Dodd. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, let's see. Top of the round, reset. Uh, you were up. All right, um, Phil. Maybe, maybe if you show it the apple, it'll charge you. Yeah, that was and my next will... plan. Nice. I will go up to you, Rock, the apple. and I will ready my attack for when the ram gets into range. Okay. And I will also bonus action take the dodge, um, step of the wind dodge. All right. As your turn ends. Uh, it is going to use its last leisure action points, uh, and it's going to run over here. Oh. All right, uh, Philippocles, you're up. Yeah, Phil. Uh, gonna pull the apple uh, okay. out of his loincloth. Um, he's just gonna hold it to the sky. This is what you want! You'll only get it out of my cold, dead hands! So come and get it! And I'm flexing when I'm doing it. Oh, fair enough. Are you, uh, bonus action re-upping your yeah, rage yeah, or no? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright, fair enough. Uh, as your turn ends, you hear the bloop 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 of legendary action points. Uh, the creature... Uh, rears up on its hind legs, paws at the air, and then begins to charge towards Anastasia's prone body. Uh, this is going to be with advantage, Anastasia. Uh, 28. Just uh, <laughs> since you are Since you are <laughs> paralyzed, this is going to be a critical hit. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, and the charge, and I think I'm dead again. <laughs> okay. Uh, this might be enough damage for pure death. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. As it comes charging forward, uh, this is going to be triple damage. Oof. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there's any way I don't die. <laughs> Alright, so that would be. Uh, let's see. It would I have could to just, do 44 uh, damage to instant kill me. So. All right. So let's see. 12 d4. Uh, there we go. Uh, plus. What is this? 64 force. Okay. Plus. Uh, the charge. All right. Uh, let's see what we got. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Oh my god! So it just sort of like like a fucking choo choo train. It just sort of like runs right over her, uh, and sort of skids to a halt, uh, right here. And again, a spray of snow over at Philippocles. That is its turn, Hypatia. 
Alright, um... I will magic missile it. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, all three unnerringly strike it. It takes full damage. You have okay. discovered its yeah, you've discovered its weakness. Ooh. Force damage. Nice. Alright. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Alice, get to us! Alright, as your turn ends, Hypatia, you see a crackle of electricity go across the ram's uh, wool, and it uses a discharge. Further frying the beautiful uh, angelic corpse of smushed Anastasia. Uh, Talus, go ahead and give me a dexterity saving throw. Oof. Uh, Talus, you do the Monster Hunter like I fell into my own shock trap animation and just sort of j -j 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 -j, um, and take 19 points of damage. Alright, Talus, uh, you spend your turn paralyzed. Skilla. Just dodge him. Okay. Top of the round, reset. Uh, same plan as last. Okay. Yep, so I also spend another key point to dodge. Alright, fair enough. Uh, Phil, you're up. Well, uh, Phil, he's got the apple in his hand. Well, eventually mm -hmm. it will come to you. Because <laughs> it has to kill you to win. He's just <laughs> licking it. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. It. Okay. Uh, oh, the you... apple's so good. <laughs> You see its golden eyes widen with horror and disgust as you start levaciously licking all over its golden apple. Some peanut butter and raisins would be good on this. <laughs> oh no! Alright. Uh, uh, that was my item interact. And then I'm going to ready an attack and re up my rage. From the south, uh, you hear Ky uh, your Aunt Kyra say, uh, Karina, I can't see anything. Are they eating the apple? I heard peanut butter and raisins. Are they eating the apple? Don't eat the apple without me. Please don't. All right. There is the bloop, bloop, bloop of legendary actions. This thing uh, is just going to kick off and go. Talus, you can make an opportunity attack if you'd like. It is running right towards Philippocles. It has had enough of this bullshit. Well, don't I have to wait till the end of its turn? To do what? An opportunity attack? It's moving out of a threatened space. No, like, aren't you paralyzed? Oh, shit. My bad. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. All right. Then, in, yeah, it runs across the battlefield for Phil. Here we go. Uh, when it gets in range, I'm going to release my ready to attack and miss. All right, as you swing on it, it just kind of tilts its horns down, and the mithril blade just kind of sparks along those horns. Uh, Reset, you were holding a ready to action. Uh, no. All right, uh, the arrow kind of tangles in its fur, and then it's... maybe? Uh, whoosh! All right. Uh, it slams into uh, Philippocles and the nearby rocks. There is like a sonic boom of sound as it hits. Let's see what happens. Uh, Alright, right in the nose. Uh, Tripo damage from that uh, blunt force to the nose. Alright, so I guess I'll just mouse up until I see that... Uh, thing again uh, so 85 uh, I guess I should have done the four separately though oh yeah. I'm such an idiot um, let's see mm, oh no they're separated there you go um, so the force is the three 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 one so six six twelve fourteen fourteen points of force uh, the other damage is uh, reducible. I'm not unconscious. Okay. 
Yeah, the uh, the DM group for Odyssey, they're like, isn't like the Golden Ram like, you know, late game content? And I was like, yeah, but they really want to hunt it, so you know, I was like, you gotta you gotta respect player agency. Um, so it comes barreling into you, and there's just an explosion of like uh, snow and ice and rocks, uh, and it looks down at the uh, the apple. And there is a there is a yearning on its face, but it has not finished the battle, and thus it will not eat the apple because that would be unsportsmanlike. All right, Hypatia, you're up. I'm gonna throw my hands up in the air. I give. Okay. I'm done. I yield. All right, the creature nods to you. I was uh, gonna do it, that too, but. <laughs> get a chance. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. The creature is going to shimmer with electricity and uh, discharge. Uh, so fill on the ground. Takes uh, a failed death save. Uh, reset. You can go ahead and do your thing. Peritos, if you're 30 feet up, you should should be out of range. Okay, reset. Again, you kind of seize up and just start kind of shaking from the electricity. Talus, you're up. He will take, seeing that all his components, all his compatriots are either mobilized or have already given up, he'll concede defeat as well. All right. Uh, Skilla. Do you concede defeat, or do you grab your buster sword and get up uh, in there? Uh, she's just, like, straight up hiding at this point. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. All right. Uh, reset to you. Uh, she's going to try, as she's struggling off the paralysis, yeah. is readying her action to point at the apple and say, Phil is down, you can just take it. We don't, we don't care. Uh, but that'll happen after the paralysis wears off. Uh, Phil. Death. Saving throw against death. Oh. Oh shit. Well, you're you're dead, dead now. Okay. Um. So, the Golden Ram's turn comes up. Uh, it looks around the battlefield. Uh, it looks at all of you. It looks at Reset, kind of, you know, questioningly. Uh, and it lowers its head towards the apple. And then there is the loudest crunch, like the loudest crunchy sound, and it just sort of echoes through the valley. And you hear from the south, Kyra cry out in sadness as the apple is eaten. <laughs> All right. The golden ram uh, kind of looks around. Its face is just a painting of absolute and total joy as it just chews slowly but surely. There's like a tear of liquid gold reset that goes down its face. Uh, it then goes about the task of going up to each of the fallen and using its ridiculous uh, innate spellcasting ability, it is going to uh, resurrect um, each of you. So um, it brings Astraeus back to life, uh, Anastasia back to life, and finally Philippocles back to life. And as it brings Phil back to life, it lowers its, uh, its horns towards him. And with its mouth, it kind of grabs hold of his, you know, battle harness, as it were, and kind of pulls him to his feet. Is it gone? It is... I have eaten my prize, but I must say, son of Pythor, that opening hit was remarkable. I know that our arrangement said that I would keep my fleece, but I am impressed with the battle that we had. Perhaps... A later time, we can 
do this again, and then my fleece can be yours. In the meantime, I would like to grant you and yours a small boon. Do you accept? It was kind of crying because he knows the apple's gone. Mm. But... You, you can smell it on his, his filthy ram mouth. You can smell that apple. I I think he means to say he does accept. All right. Uh, the creature uh, looks up at the sky and the clouds part and another brilliant golden ray of sunlight hits the creature. And as it flashes across him and you catch sight of it, uh, or in the case of people that are still blind, um, as the radiance from its wool uh, shimmers across you, you do feel the benefit of its boon. Uh, you have gained one point of legendary resistance. Ooh. So if you fail a saving throw, you may choose to succeed instead. Nice. All right. Uh, the creature uh, says, um, I have a feeling that we will meet again. Go forth and do great deeds. And then it sort of gallops off into the ethereal plane. My apple! We'll find more. Alright, it occurs to you guys that the boar uh, was sort of created by Sidon as like, uh, oh, you mad boar? Sure, I'll give you a blessing. Um, whereas the ram is an actual, like, beast of legend uh there's stories about it it's existed for like ever um that kind of thing so you can kind of see the difference between um local legend and true legend and and the idea that there are more creatures like this out in the world some uh malicious in nature um uh, it's probably a little unsettling um out of curiosity which did he use revivify or i know it used to use a legitimate uh resurrection true res so they would be at full uh yeah they would be back to normal that means no death curse either all right It's good that we stopped at three because it could only do that three times per day. So, <laughs> um, all right. What's the plan now? Uh, Kyra would like to take a short rest so that she can use the ability, uh, her her song or whatever, to unblind herself. And me. That, that that sounds like a good plan. I agree. Yes, we should. Uh... Take a moment to rest and reflect on these events. Is Phil giant on anybody else's screen? <laughs> yeah, he's still giant. <laughs> Here, hold on. I'll 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 sure go back down. It only lasts it only lasts for a minute, sadly. So it can't solve all of the sexy problems that uh, Brave Adventures have, but <laughs> unless they're real fast, unless they're real fast. Um. Okay. Uh So your uh your party uh bard i guess goes ahead and uses song of rejuvenation as you guys rest rest up All right do familiars get like hit dice they can use or do i have to like technically anything with hit dice can use a hit die during a short rest and i think um, i have yeah. a question Sure. I have a question. So I have quickened healing. Would I be able to use that before the short rest and then get my key points back after the short rest? Uh, yeah, that is a common practice of the monk is to uh, make as make as smart a use of their uh, key point pool as possible. I could also cure wounds somebody before uh, the rest. I regain my cure wounds on a short rest. Well, I'm definitely down some hit points. 
All right, I will cure wounds you. Mm. Oh wow! <laughs> okay, there's your two. Well, I, I could also right. do one before the short rest too. If you don't have any hit dice, I can. I got hit dice. I'm not too worried about them. I'm just okay. thinking if you had some to spare. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I get it back anyway. So here you go. There, there, that's there's a cure wounds for you. Nice. Well, everyone <laughs> rest. I was just gonna go to this rock, large rock, and just start carving uh, the battle that happened here into it. Oh, hype! All right. Uh, yeah. So Kyra apologizes for being blinded. So she needs you guys to sort of walk her through how the fight went down, so she knows. You know what to write into the uh, the songs or whatever. Well, Mitros guided Philippicles' hand in his opening blow. Mm -mm. And then proceeded to. <laughs> but the ram's might was far greater than we could have ever guessed. Like Philippicles actually hit it so hard he knocked it into the ethereal, but then when ah. it came back, it was angry. Mm. And it started trampling us to death. And then I and then I licked the apple, and that was its last straw. Mm. And it, it tasted so good. It oh, was. Hypatia she she, also... uh, she holds you. She holds you, and you can feel the hot, fresh tears go staining her cheeks as she whispers to you, "We'll find another. We'll find another." You do realize that you've not been so greedy. We'd have the fleece right now. I mean, turns, tur she turns to you and says, You don't know the power that Apple has. Or had. She kind of looks wistfully off into the mountains. You can see I that she's, she's haunted by some backstory shit. I don't think we really want to know. Oh, don't... Kyra, don't forget to write about the um, amazing giant snowball Hypatia shot at the ram. Yeah. That That's actually, true. from from what I'm understanding, that was the highest DPS of the match besides the opening crit. So it was the second. Uh, so we got one big hit and two big hits. So that was pretty good. And then you yeah. also had that magic missile, right? So yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The snowball also evoked a. Uh... Oh no! Wait, I was unconscious and dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He did chuckle at me. I thought it was funny too. Well, I just feel like if I could blind people with my looks, I would just like have spammed that until everybody was blind and then just had a super easy time. But I don't know. Maybe I had to recharge it. Maybe. It was definitely a noble creature, that's for sure. If there's one thing we should have learned from this day, it is that, well, the prophecies speak of us as doing legendary things, we are a far cry from what we need to be in order to achieve them. Mm -hmm. I think it would be best if we headed to the uh, necropolis at Telemach and try and fulfill the next step in our destinies. It was it's fun close though, right? To hear, like, right? I had fun. Yeah, we had uh, fun. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like the a day up here had fun. It's like a day's <laughs> journey. And then we'll we'll be there. So, Astraeus is like trying to pound out dents in his armor and wipe off his own copious amounts of blood uh, <laughs> from his armor. And he's gonna look at Hepatia and he's gonna say, oh, "Dying I is guess... about as fun as you might think it would be." Oh, I guess. Okay. Sorry, that was insensitive. Mm. Yeah. I know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I, I died recently, so that's pretty bad. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, let's do this thing. Uh, heading south through the mountains to Telemach. Uh, if you are cold now, it will only get worse from here on out. So if you are not okay with the cold or you need cold clothes, you got to let me know before we go any further. I'd like some cold, cold clothes. Okay. 
Yeah, it, it would be useful. Um, right. Is there I'm... a particular animal that you consider your spirit animal? Dragon? <laughs> that That's not... <laughs> The noble squirrel. The noble squirrel. Do you even get cold, Talus? I guess you do, right? I mean, you're, you're made of wood. Wood shouldn't get cold. I'm just, like, constantly casting firebolt every six seconds. I, I right. guess there for for yeah. Phil puts another loincloth over his other loincloth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that Astraeus would do is he would use prestigitation to at least warm up a couple pieces of his uh, his undergarments so that they stay warm. <laughs> uh, anyone that requests cold, uh, sorry, extreme cold weather clothing, um, Kyra is more than willing to look through her backpack to see if she could find you something um, that could help. Uh, but mysteriously, she asks everyone what, uh, who asks what their... Um, spiritual uh animal is wolf okay uh one by one uh she produces some of those adorable japanese uh kigurumi pajamas uh in the particular animal that you are um affiliated with uh it is a baggy enough outfit that you can wear it over your clothes uh so that um you you don't have to like take off your arm or anything so we look like raccoon suit Mario, just with our other animals. Yeah, kinda. Kind of. Lost yeah. Boys Peter Pan. That's what I'm. There asking. you go. Okay. Oh, like that's yeah, yeah. Uh, like that would be like squirrel pajamas. You know what I mean? Like, but they are incredibly warm, and they do a pretty decent job of cutting down on the on the wind chill factor. So. All right suited up appropriately you guys continue south uh through the woods uh into or not the woods uh well i guess there are yeah through the frozen evergreen forests uh and icy mountain range that will take you to telemach uh true to what she said um things do grow colder and snow does begin to fall all right um after a time uh, there is flavor text that I have to find real quick. Oh, yeah, I have an actual book. That's probably going to be easier. There you go. <clears throat> so fascinated by having this book. I just actually appreciate can hear the pages turn <laughs> right um okay Hypatia. as you uh continue um let's see ah you exit the evergreen forest into a light powdery snowfall uh across the endless expanse of white you see dozens of massive stone arms reaching out of the ground Dwarfing everything around you for a mile. The arms appear motionless and seemingly have no purpose. This alien sight invites some unnerving questions. What are the arms for? Who created them? Are they alive? Well, we'll find out because I'm going to take you over to uh, a map that's full of creepy stone uh, arms. So. Uh, assuming there we go a good time for you to, to die mouse battery right now all right oof oh man maybe i won't take you over to this map it is losing its mind over here let me see i'm gonna reload my roll 20 and see if the the map shows up so angry Your next video can be how to run a campaign in Roll20 using nothing but keyboard shortcuts. Yeah, right. Um, technically, you could, but it would be so miserable. 
Okay, there we go. Yeah, so you know how, like, when I say, hey, this map is blah, 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 so if the, the map doesn't load, or if it loads incorrectly, blah, 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 it actually happened to me this time. All right, so there is animation on this map. Um, if it makes your experience completely unplayable, let me know, and I will remove it. So, because, uh, again, you know, um, while Roll20 can handle animation, it doesn't always handle animation uh, very well. Oh, I can't paste you guys in anymore because I restarted, so it cleared my uh, my clipboard. Nice. Alright, let me grab you again and try one more time. Okay, it seems to be done pooping its pants, so that's good. Uh, bring you over to the map. All right, can everybody see? Yep. Yeah. All yeah. right. Could you ping there us? There should be. We're at... Yeah, you are in the top of the map over here. Ooh. Oh, they are very large. That's creepy. Okay. So as you are making your way across the plains and see these hands, uh, Kyra says to you guys, Oh, you know what? Before I forget, um, before I forget, you are going to need this to get into the necropolis. So um, who, who do I give this to? It's a dragon lord coin. Me, me. You? Okay, sure. Here you go. Astraeus would have, like, stepped forward, but then when uh, when someone else called for it, he just put his head down and stepped back. Okay. Um, you recognize these uh, these coins, but you also recognize the face of the man on the coin. And seeing his face again, Astraeus, after all this time, as your memories start to slowly return to you, uh, is a huge punch in the guts. Um, it is the very noble face of uh, Xander Hroth. Hroth? Hroth? I think I'm pronouncing that right. Horgoth, wasn't it? I can't remember. Horoth. There we go. Xander Horoth. Um, yeah, on the reverse side of the coin is a picture of that dope-ass ship that everybody keeps talking about, the Ultras. Uh, whoever's holding the coin can understand, but not speak, the Draconic language. Oh, I already know Draconic. Hmm. I mean, Kyra just kind of struggles. She's like, yeah, you're going to need to show that to Damon um, so he doesn't kill you when we get to the um, Necropolis. Damon, got it. Yeah. Could you imagine if I had forgotten to give you that and then uh, you showed up and you didn't have that? So, well, technically, technically, um, yeah. Um, technically, the Oracle was supposed to give it to you, um, but I guess she was a little distracted, if you know what I mean, uh, the last time uh, somebody uh, visited her. And she kind of throws some side-eye over uh, at Astraeus, uh, and I guess she forgot to give it to him. But I had your back. Um, Susan Pickleman swung by and picked it up for you. Right, Susan. Yeah. Should we maybe, like, camp for the night before we go in? Or... Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, like, where we're going, it's just going to get, the weather's going to get worse. Um, there's all sorts of, like, horrible creatures that prowl the air, the rock, the earth. Um, there's also, like, a tremendous amount of ne uh, necromantic energy. So, a lot of times, anything that dies near Telemach rises as like a ghost or a specter or something horrible like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, but I know that you're probably nervous about meeting Damon. Um, so I'm I'm gonna assuage some of your fears. All right. I I know the guy. He's he's definitely like the OG Edge Lord. 
like right he was kind of like your uh alexi right um but worse guy refused to do the oath of friendship he uh always wanted to do his own thing and go his own way he was too cool right to to be on the team but he was always on the team do you know what i mean um one of those people right like they want to hang out but they don't want to commit yeah and uh oh man like he wow real ripped right like muscles but still a wizard right which is kind of weird like are you like pick a pick a pick a profession you know what i mean um here i'll show you uh, uh minor illusion here you go so you heard of muscle wizard right yeah like like dude was always hitting the gym always hitting the gym like reading a book in one hand pumping iron with the other hand but actually no you know what he was actually kind of a bluish color uh oh here we go there he is uh astraeus upon seeing um your former companion uh well i guess he wasn't your former companion you knew of him he kind of like you know he was part of the crew but not part of the crew kind of like kyra was saying uh you see this guy and it's just more of that like oh my god too many too many flashbacks happening like rapid fire kind of thing uh it, yeah but anyways yeah he was just i don't know i never i never really cared for him and then there was the whole awkwardness of like the big huge boss fight and then he's like the only survivor and he shows up with like a bunch of like his dead allies to me it never really you know never really felt right not that i'm trying to put you against him or anything before we get there because i'm a totally neutral person and i'm just neutral and i'm following you guys around and recording your history and all that but i just thought i'd give you a little heads up so this daemon <laughs> this daemon you're showing us you're saying that he's the same daemon who the stories say brought the Ultros back and delivered the Oath of Peace to Mitros? Yeah, yep, that's him. Mm -hmm. And I'm, uh, I'll, uh, I'll walk up to Mitros and be like, yeah, licks are, are not fun. That's, yeah, that's not a, it's not a good way to go. We get Sorry, to... How we well, he he about that at the academy. he turned into a lich on, on his own. It was it was his choice, you know. He, no, he no, no. But I mean, it's it's like a it's like a not a good decision to make. Oh there's, yeah. There's lots of PSAs. Yeah, all on, the honestly, academy. there's so many roads to immortality. Like lich is kind of like the grossest one, in my opinion. But maybe I'm biased because I'm a badass immortal goddess. So I don't know. Ooh. What what is his purpose of the necropolis? Uh he is the caretaker. Uh, and and guardian. The necropolis is where all of the most famous dragon lords are buried, including Xander. That's why you're going there. Is you're going to claim uh Xander's equipment as your own. And I that, have that's to your talk that's your David. third that's your third um labor. Oh, and I guess, yeah, Hypati, you're supposed to talk to him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, that that wouldn't count as grave robbing, would it? Um, yeah, I believe if the oracle said you were prophesized to do it, you should be okay. But we shouldn't touch anything else. Well, I mean, you know, like, it's a city of the dead, full of undead guarded by an incredibly powerful arch lich i mean i wouldn't steal from it but you know like that's you know that's just me we could poke around if you want i don't know well, no no no. I, I wouldn't steal no i'm not saying you would i'm just saying you know if you're curious about you know we could window shop right i mean you know you know you don't want to touch it we'll just see see what everybody got buried with you know Oh, that would be fun. Yeah, it's like when you're invited to someone's house, so you go into like their bath area and you see what kind of like um, you know, drugs they're hiding in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> like 
I, I think it would be ill to disturb Maybe any, use their perfume. any tombs or sarcophagi uh, we, where we may find. We're just look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just going to look. I mean, we're not going to, you know, take anything. We could yeah. ask this daemon if there's any caches of weapons or arms or equipment that don't require us to disturb a grave. Mm. It's going to be a little tricky because Damon also took a a, a, a a vow of silence. Okay, so so don't talk to Damon. Wait, no. Well, I, I mean, you to. could. He didn't take a, a vow of not listening. He just took a vow of silence. But I'm supposed. I'm. That's. I'm supposed to talk to him. Well, right. You like. You can talk. You could talk to that tree over there, or one of them hands. Like no one's gonna stop you. But, but I'm. How's that gonna help my mom? I. Hey. I mean, I don't know. I can't. I can't hand out spoilers like that. More pressing might be, Kira. Do you know anything about these these hands? Are these like? Are they stone? Are they wood? Are they flesh? Like Why literally? don't I let Talus tell you? And she kind of Vanna Whites to Talus. These are the hands of Ketamene. Ketamene? <laughs> Ketamene, husband of Thylea. He helped to create this land. That is a very powerful titan, and I certainly would not recommend pissing him off. And he just left his hands laying around. Oh, believe me, he's got many, 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 many more. So we should not touch. I would recommend giving them respect. Sounds good. So is the plan just to camp out for the night next to these uh, hands of the Titan? Oh, Isn't look, here? we could do it right here in the middle of like five of them. Do they stretch to the east and west of this? Like, like this map is just our snapshot, but they like. Yeah, yeah, they they are about a mile, like a square mile of like stone hands. Well, we we could move back a bit and then just camp, like. Up, up north a little bit. Is it sunset? I'd almost like to get to the other side of them before camping. Yeah, because if we have time, we we might as well go past and then. Camp. I would try to give them as wide a berth as we can. I mean, it looks like he's got a hell of a reach. Single ah. file, wind our way through. Astraeus is just going to start walking forward, unless anyone has something. Thought we were going to camp for. Why are we camping? I mean, there's still daylight if you wanted to keep going. Some people are spent. I feel. <laughs> um. Once, once we pass this, are we inside that um necromantic, like aura ne sort of necropolis? No, no, no. The, he said there was necromantic energy around the place that we could feel. So is, would it be stronger on the other side of this area? Oh, yeah. The closer you get to Telemach, the uh, spookier your spooky vibes are going to get. Yeah, so then I guess we should camp before we go past it. Because we don't want to be camping inside the, the vibes. Okay. Should we vote? Well, I'm good to camp here if we want to. If we want to camp. Yeah, here. I okay. like my sleep without zombies. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, you guys settle in, uh, and make camp. Uh, All right. Hey, hey, Hypatia. Yeah. Would you like this coin? You need to speak with Damon. Right? 
Um, I guess so. I maybe this will draconic though, because you know, smart. Yeah, I I do too. But maybe this will let him listen to you, so you can start the conversation. Okay, I'll give it a try. I'd like to see if I can hunt any game in the area. Okay, uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey style. You send uh, adorable robotic uh, flying chameleon into the air. Um, it reports back to you that there are signs of Yeti in the area. Um, the area does seem to be uh, perhaps overhunted. I'll let everyone know to be on the lookout for Yetis. This seems to be their territory. Mm. Because, you know, a mile of spooky hands wasn't enough. So, <laughs> um, All right, so you guys settle in. Do you build a big-ass blazing bonfire, uh, or do you just rely on your import pajamas to uh, shield you from the cold? Are these tents, when we go into them, are they, like, magically warmed? Oh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know. Yeah, a little bit. So, uh, I think I would, uh, I would, I would suggest no fire if we all get in the tents. There are no Weasley tents. There are no Weasley tents. Uh, and and each one has something uniquely awkward about it. So, like a bad urine smell, or like a slight tear that allows just a sliver of moonlight to come in and hit you in the eyes when you're sleeping. Um, and since they're all identical, you never know which horrible tent flaw. Um, you're going to end up with uh, when you sleep in one. But they do perform the functions of tents. So I would actually like to come out here and uh, dig a small hole and bury five coins as a sacrifice to um, Kentamine. Oh, okay. Hype. As for a safe passage. All right. Uh, it's almost supernatural, but you could swear that the coins sink uh, eagerly into the snow, finding their way down to the earth beneath. I'll just take watch like a would. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna get tired, right? Yeah. Well, not in the same way that the others do. Um, alright. So, uh, night settles in. The snow continues to fall. Anyone else, uh, hanging out on watch? Or are you letting Talus kind of sit out there in his, uh, in his snuggie, keeping track and, uh, watching out for danger? Astraeus is completely distracted and uh, like actually forgets about the entire notion of, of posting a watch. All right. Uh, in that case, as uh, the night um, continues to um, grow colder, and darker, and more tranquil, you just see the snow continue to accumulate on the uh, the hands. The hands remain unmoving, but sometimes piles of snow will shift and slough off of the hands, making a loud, startling noise in in the night and the darkness. Eventually, Talus, uh, give me a perception check, um, or just use your passive, whichever you'd prefer to do. I'll use the other perception check, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, you... Uh, let me double check. Yeah. Uh, you hear the husky snuffling sounds 
of very, 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 very big um, creatures uh, kind of slowing their way, uh, plowing their way through the snow uh, towards your campsite. Uh, looking out into the shadows of the night, you do see the large horned uh, silhouettes of simian humanoids uh, making their way towards your campsite. All that at a high pitched whistle. Okay. All Let's right. Trying to raise the attention of others. There seems to be three uh, huge creatures and one uh, that is even bigger than that so I will go ahead and uh, drop them down uh, at the edge of the map there's uh they're, they're pretty cute as far as uh, monsters go so you guys know that I don't just say every monster's cute I got standards so uh, let's see. No, I don't. I love them all. Yeah, no. I mean, I'll just kind of <laughs> run out of my tent. What and is there, it? there is a biggin uh, with them. All right. Uh, yeah. They, uh, as they are approaching, seem intent to investigate uh, and, by their reputation, uh, may murder and devour whatever they find. All right, go ahead and roll me some initiative. Pause this. No, I've never been sure of being able to uh, strike the Yetis. All right. Uh, because Talus was able to beat their incredible stealth of 13, he is able to warn everyone. They do not reach the campsite with surprise. Everyone is uh, functioning. I will, of course, move these NPCs after I roll them into initiative uh, into their respective tents. Let's see. Why is there no combat music? Nope. Hold on. There you go. That's not the one I wanted. Uh, let's see. There we go. All right. And then, uh, does anybody want to sleep with Lorius? Because he doesn't like yeah, to sleep Lor by himself. Lor oh, Lor okay. me. All right, fair enough. We were we were talking about apples. Talus probably heard whining and whales crying. Aw. I was in my hands. <laughs> uh, Astraeus, uh, you're up first. All right. Um. Not exactly knowing what's happening, he'll come out of his tent. Uh, I take it these things are large enough that in the moonlight he would notice that they are there? Oh yes, they are um, outlined in the moonlight for sure. They are um, huge and, what's the size of a huge? Gargantuan? Yeah. Uh, he's gonna yell out in case anyone is not yet awake. Uh, enemies approaching the camp. Ready yourselves to defend or to flee. And uh, then he'll just step forward and he'll just ready uh, ready an attack if one of them gets in close. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Talus, you're up. Um, step up here.
I will know that. Stop. Go no further. Okay. What, uh, you broke up a little bit. What language do you shout that out in? Uh, primordial. It's the only one that's no other than common. Alright. Uh, yeah, you make some pretty intimidating, uh, and exotic sounds. Um, the creatures don't seem to pay it any mind. Alright, in which case, I will... Uh, chuck a Okay. I don't know, is Talos breaking up for anyone else, or...? Yeah, yeah he's yeah. breaking up. Yeah, okay. yeah, a little bit, yeah. He said chuck a chakra. Alright, chuck that chakra room, let's see it. Yeah, that's definitely a hit. It uh, strikes the creature uh, upside the head. There is a slight spray of blood, and then uh, it returns to you. Sorry, Crash, the snow is killing my, my roll. Okay, every yeah, day I'll, get, I'll get rid of it, yeah. I don't know if that's as cause to a sound. Uh, let's see. Oops. I'm going to try refreshing my sound, see if it helps. Night falls. Bam. <laughs> ah, my eyes. <laughs> All right, hold on. Someday we'll be able to enjoy um, animated stuff. I swear, it's gonna happen someday. That Foundry app looks pretty sweet. There we go. That should be better. If it's still fucky, um, you can try refreshing, and it should probably fix it. It looks so good right now. Okay. How's my audio sound? Yeah, much better. It's weird. Super clear. Yeah. Okay. Oh, are you using Discord through your browser or through the Discord app? Uh, oh, that's it. See, uh, roll twenty with its animated stuff. It was destroying your Chrome browser. That's yeah. Like Should that. totally, totally download the um, Discord client because that'll use separate resources from your browser, so you'll have way better sound. Oh wait, never mind. I'm doing it through the client. Like I got the app. Oh. And, um, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, if everybody's better, let's continue. So, Strace, you call out a warning to everybody, and then. Uh, I had ready the Oh yeah, you did your thing, and then, and then Talos, Talos threw his attack. thing, and then... Alright, there we go. So then, Phil? Unless Talos wants to move? Nope, I already moved up. So. Alright. Um, Phil's just gonna... Look at Lorius. Quick! Take Philip of Threes to Kyra! And he's gonna run up next to Talos. And he's gonna pull out um, his javelin of lightning. And he's gonna cock it back, and he's readying a, a throw as soon Good as they get closer. Yeah, waiting for a lineup. All right, fair enough. All right, this one that has been damaged and is... And he'll bonus action rage. Okay. This one that has been damaged, it is going to uh, shuffle through the snow um, with no penalty, because uh, this is where it lives. Uh, it rushes forward uh, 40 feet. And then, um, let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll move another 40 feet forward to here. Uh, that'll be its turn. All right, reset, you're up. All right, um... Apparently, I shared a tent with Hypatia, so I'll I'll poke my head inside and tell her uh, <laughs> you, you might want to get out. And then I will shoot this one with the bow. Okay. Uh, 23 for 6. Okay. That is definitely a hit. Takes 6 points of damage. Uh, the arrow just kind of sticks into its furry hide. And then I will back up a bit to here. All right. Uh, Anastasia, you're up. Let's just come running out of the tent to see what's going on. Um, oh. Um, and then she'll... yeah, it's just a twenty, just a twenty foot tall yeti. No big deal. And then more, <laughs> then uh, like a forty foot tall one <laughs> over there. All yeah, right. yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah. All right. Um. Oh. Hex, hex is a bonus action. Look at that. I'm going to hex it, and I'm going to oh. choose. 
I didn't roll the big boy into initiative. There we go. Okay, keep going. All right, I'm gonna hex uh, this big one. It's gonna be. It's gonna have disadvantage on strength checks. Um, and then I'm just gonna keep running this way. And then I'll shoot an eldritch blast over my shoulder as I run away. Okay. Uh, 14 definitely hits. So three and plus. add that hex damage. All right, the creature kind of staggers back from the attack. And that's it. Uh, yeah, it looks down at all of you, and you can see on its kind of stupid face, there's a lot of, like, calculations going on. Like, maybe I'm in over my head here. All right. That brings us to this one over here. He doesn't know that his buddies had over his head. Uh, he's gonna move and dash. All right, team NPC. Uh, Lorius is going to run over here uh, carrying the dog. The dog is gonna be uh, barking in three distinct different barks. Uh, Kyra shouts out to you guys. Do you need need music accompaniment? Uh, are you good or? Like they nah. could we could why why don't lucky. you take a break for this round? Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks. Uh, all right. Uh, Skilla is up. Uh, Skilla is gonna scream in Mom's face because she's still kind of like drowsy and struggling to wake up, and uh, and then fly out of the tent, um, boop this one on the nose, and then fly away. Okay, this one right here? That's... Yep, All yep, right. this one right here. Fair enough. Okay, that brings us to Soul. Just gonna fly out. Um, I'm gonna save that advantage for someone else. So just go over here and uh, dodge. That's it. Okay, Hypatia. All right, I'm going to finally stumble out of the tent go, ah! and throw a fireball at it. Firebolt. I okay. have trouble with words. Uh, at this one right here? Uh, yep. Okay, yeah, as you strike it with fire, um, its eyes go wide. See, there was no campfire here. So as you hit it with fire, its eyes go wide with fear, and it lets out a warning howl. Um, to the others. Ooh. And then I'm gonna, like, turn around and see this one and go, oh god! And run away. Okay. Before, um, that one moves, Phil's gonna go ahead and, uh, throw the javelin at the big guy recklessly. Alrighty. So it should hit, um, see my line? Like that? Yeah, yeah, I see it, yeah. Alright. Should hit all three. Scream Pythor as he throws. It. Recklessly throws it. Okay, yeah, a eleven would not have hit, but a twenty does. Um, that is gonna slam into this dude for eleven points of damage, uh, which has the side benefit of also causing a lightning bolt to appear between him and you. All three of them need to make dexterity saves. There we go. Uh, all three of them fail, taking 18 points of damage. The one up close is bloodied. Awesome. I don't think there's rage damage on the attack, also. I should click that off. This is oh, great. right. I got you. Okay. All right. Uh, seeing that you have both fire and magic, even this big ass dude is having some second thoughts. Uh, this one. Is going to flee into the night. All right. All around you, the stony hands do nothing. All right. Big boy, standing over 30 feet tall. He looks over at you, his eyes glowing with a menacing white light. He is going to sulk away into the shadows. 
but you get the feeling that when he locked those uh, eyes with you, he was marking you. All right, top of the round. Well, how far Astraeus. is he off the map? <laughs> uh, I mean, he moved his uh, his full speed, uh, so he moved a hundred feet because he did a move and a dash. Okay. I guess we'll let him live. All right. I mean, I'm going to get my javelin. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, Astraeus is going to, uh, seeing the reaction of the, the firebolt, he's going to light a torch. Okay. And he'll uh, simply wave it menacingly at, at this one, as if to say, back off or fire. Oh, all right. Uh, would you so you light with it with an action and then you kind of brandish the torch at him? Got it. Yep. All right. Talus. So is that javelin still stuck in the big guy who ran away? Uh, shit. You know what? That's a really good question. Let's let R and Jesus decide. Um, normally, you don't really think about what happens to javelins, but I guess if they're incredibly expensive presents from your dad, uh, you you do. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and roll it. Uh, we'll say on a five or less on this d20, it is stuck in the creature's hide. All right, so the creature sort of swatted it loose from its uh, its body um, before leaving. So it is actually going to be down on the ground over here. All right. Uh, Paratos will do its his little claw attack first. All right. Uh, 12 hits. Alright. That's 5 slash. And he, now he, uh, the big guy can't do any reactions. Okay. And All right. Talos will move on by. And throw a shotgun at him. Okay. You're trying to hit an armor class of 12. And we'll actually use a sharpshooter. All right, go for it. Uh, that's... All right. Uh, you kind of give it a toss. Uh, the creature um, is in the middle of sort of ducking out of the way of Peritos. The chakram flies over its head and then wings back around to you. Philippocles, you're up. Yeah, I'm just gonna fly at this guy right here, and I'm gonna use my bonus action to grab it on its horn. Okay, it has disadvantage to this because of Hex. Uh, nope, you got it. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of like lift it off its feet a little bit, and then I'm just gonna bring my sword down into its head. Okay. Those little wings uh, in your boots. Yeah. <laughs> Overdrive. Yeah, it's like smoke coming out of like the where the wings attach. Um, yeah, you bring your sword down. How do you finish it? Oh, yeah, I just straight through its skull. Like right. maybe the tip comes out through the bottom and I just pull it out. All right. The... And, dro and I drop it. Okay. The creature falls a huge mass of fur and meat to the ground. This one, already being menaced by a torch, uh, looks around fearfully. It turns back to see if the boss is still there and sees no one. It lets out a panicked hoot. And then it goes completely nuts with rage and fear. Alright, anything else from Phil? I just spent the rest of my movement. Alright, fair enough. Uh, Reset, you're up. Uh, rage and fear. Does it look like it's staring at Astraeus's fire, or is it staring off to the distance? Uh, well, you know, it looked back, saw it was abandoned, and then uh, looks back at you guys. It is fearful of the fire, but angry at its situation. Okay. Then I will stand behind Astraeus, and I will shoot this one with the bow. Uh, that's a miss. Christmas. It's Christmas. All right. 
let's see what happens on that uh, Christmas. <laughs> could be exciting. It could be a Merry Christmas. Uh, let's see. This is a ranged attack. It is, yeah. All right. Um, go ahead and give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, nice. All right. As you throw the, the, or sorry, as you fire the bow, uh, the creature just knocks the arrow out of the way. Uh, and then it looks over at you dismissively. Uh, but after two har two or three weeks of being uh, broken down to your most basic building blocks uh, and put back together, this does not bother you. You are able to ignore its dismissive look. All right. Hey. Anastasia, you're up. Uh, I'm just going to bonus action, move my hex. We'll do uh, strength again, and then um, I will Eldritch Blast it. Aww. All right, 16 hits, takes eight points of damage. Plus a hex. All right. Okay, looks around for the source of the damage. Uh, not too happy about all this. Sees you way off in the distance. Uh, yeah, I'll just kind of move over here more. <laughs> uh, okay. That's it. All right. Uh, the creature doesn't want anything to do with that fire, but it uh, is intelligent and wise enough to know that it is not going to make it out of this alive. Uh, it is too evil um, and chaotic to ever surrender, so it will just try to murder as many things as possible uh, before it goes down. Um, so... Uh, it lowers its head uh, and levels its gaze at Talus. As it does, uh, you feel an unnatural cold wash over your body. Give me a constitution saving throw, Talus. Oof. All right. Uh, so what it's using is its chilling gaze. Yeti targets one creature it can see within 30 feet. Uh, if that target can also see the Yeti, uh, constitution saving throw, uh, you're going to take 3d6 cold damage and be paralyzed for a minute as your body freezes up, uh, coated in ice, your muscles frozen. The only way to prevent this is being immune to cold damage. Yikes. Uh, all right, so you freeze up and are paralyzed. It is now, because this is part of its multi-attack, going to move up and start swinging on you. Uh, kind of crushes the tent. You hear someone cry out, not my tent. And as it approaches, it raises each of its claws and it slashes at you two times, each one with advantage. Each one, if it lands, a critical hit. Here's the first. A 25. Uh, let's see what happens. Oh, all right. Uh, oof, life-threatening. Quadruple damage make a wisdom saving throw. Oof. Um, all right. On a failed save, you are frightened of creatures of this type. Um, you may attempt a new saving throw every time uh, you face... Uh, oh, you have to make this saving throw every time you face a creature of this type until you defeat enough of them to overcome your fear. That's crazy. Um, and these are monstrosities. Uh, um, so here's the quadruple damage. That means there's going to be uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's going to be nine more d6s. Wait, if these are monstrosities, then I should have advantage on that. It's what on your save? Enemy. It gives you advantage on your saves against their abilities. I thought it could say, let me double check. Okay, I thought it was just like asking them out for coffee and knowing what their like favorite color was and stuff. <laughs> Alright, 
like it's not letting would you scroll down. Would a Yeti drink coffee? I think if it had an opportunity to, it probably wouldn't, yeah. I, I feel like it'd love so. an ice cap, but I don't know if it would actually drink a coffee. You have advantage on wisdom survival checks to track your favorite enemies as to well as... To track them, yeah. yeah tracking, okay. Right. Right. About them. So here's your uh, bucket of extra damage. Uh, 36 additional damage on top of the 7. Yep, I'm down. Alright, and it's committed. So it is going to claw attack again. Uh, so that is another hit and another crit. Uh, let's see how it goes. Well, it may see uh, 19. Uh, so okay, so, is, so, yeah. so, so it hits. Yeah. Um, Alright, so it slashes at you. Um, no additional damage uh, past the critical hit, um, which wouldn't be enough damage to outright kill you. So you take two failed death saves and have suffered a weakening slash. You'll deal half damage on your next melee attack. Yikes. All right. Um, so it just sort of stands over uh, Talos's body and the uh, smash tent and just is tearing into him, letting out primal uh, hoots and cries uh, as it does so. All right. Uh, so Kyra uh, peeks out of the tent. Uh, everything good or? Uh, n now no, might be good. a good time not to good. sing. Uh, si si sing for down people. No, oh, that wouldn't that... do anything. Uh, yeah. lucky. Do the lucky song. Yeah, lucky song. All right, all right. So she sings the lucky song. I thought the other one like gave us like death. It things. gives you zombies, but if he's already down, it does nothing. I thought it gives you. I thought it was advantages on saves, death saves or something. No. No. It's not. You make, you make like a save when you oh. hit zero oh. to come back at one. Yeah. Yeah. It literally gives you the same ability as a zombie. Uh, Skilla, you're up. Um, he's gonna, uh, fly up and try and protect Talus, but actually provide the help action. Okay. Fly back a little bit. Uh, all right, Soul, you're up. Soul's gonna fly up and ready a help action. <laughs> okay. All right, Hypatia, you're up. Okay, I'm I'm gonna do the closest thing to a fireball that I can, which is a second level fire chromatic orb. Okay. At advantage, because of help. Uh, yeah. That definitely hits. As the creature uh, takes that fire damage, it lets out. A a panicked hooting cry um it is bloodied and it will have disadvantage on its attack rolls and ability checks until the end of its next turn because it is it is that shaken up by the fire all right anything else from hypatia that is it okay uh this guy was like i'm out of here big boy is out of here uh Kitana main uh, doesn't do anything. Uh, Strayus, to you. Wait, what was uh -oh. that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Astraeus is going to uh, stride forward, and as he gets to this thing, he's going to drop the torch, essentially at its feet, mm. and then he is going to uh, cast Booming Blade on it. All right. Ooh, does it? 13 hit? Yeah, they only have a 12 armor class. Yay, so that's 4 piercing damage. And, and then there's a nimbus moves. of stuff around it. Womp, 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 womp. Got it. <laughs> Alright. Anything else from Astraeus? Uh, no, he's going to be standing right here to hit um, it if it tries to hit anyone else. Um, what? No, nothing. Never mind. Okay. I, I hope you weren't actually thinking about using that lucky to re-roll that d6 damage. No, no, I was... Oh, okay, <laughs> alright, okay. Um, I'll Talus. use my lucky to re-roll that d6 of damage. Are you really going to? Okay, uh, Astraeus, give me a new d6. I didn't realize it was a 1. Oh, okie dokie. Uh, ta -da -ta -da. <laughs> okay, two more damage. Alright. 
you uh, you have the goddess of speed, luck, and uh, music uh, completely rewrite the universe to do two more points of damage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Talus saving throw against bad. death. There you go. All right, Talus is still going. Philippocles. Yeah, Phil's gonna just fly up to it, um, and he's gonna go ahead and grapple it or try okay. to grapple it. It has disadvantage um, to everything times three. So let's see how it goes. Uh, it got a six. All right. Yeah, and I'm just gonna like fly and carry this thing away from Talus so it can't hit him. All right. Still at half speed while flying because you are, you know, doing the grapple speed or whatever. But yeah, you uh, kind of pick him up off the ground, and start taking him with you. Yeah, I'll take him like ten feet down, like yeah, okay. like right there. All right. And then I will. Uh, Go ahead and uh, plunge my blade. Plunge my blade into his. All right. Uh, okay. He is still going uh, as you kind of plunge uh, through his like shoulder and kind of out the back. Uh, blood, cold, uh, and kind of thick is pouring from the creature. It is still alive. Does involuntary movement trigger booming blade? No, it does not. It does One not. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, it never will. That would, we would do <laughs> yeah. so much broken stuff. Yeah, the only broken force movement thing that I can think of is spike growth. So, um, all right, that brings us to reset. All right, forty feet of movement to the right. Okay. And um, he's being lifted in the air by Phil. I so mean, it's more I like will... five feet off the ground. Yeah, yeah that, that's good enough. I will do kind of like a uppercut with my shield. You know how sure. Ken does his uh, uh you, you're gonna stub you his toe. Using your, you're using your bow, so unless you have an ability that equips shields, I drop my bow. But that's how would it. you get your shield? It's an action to equip it. Oh, then I just yeah. uppercut him. Okay, okay. I will you don't have to be a jerk about me pointing out how shields work, though. Jeez, hurt my feet. All right, I will uppercut him three times. Okay. Three times. Oh. Okay. Uh, only one of them hits. Uh, probably because of the karma you accrued for being so rude. Uh, uh, but you do manage to kill it because it only had two hit points left. Damn, I could have right. rolled one of my teeth. Um, with that being said, unless you want to pursue these things into the dark and ominous, uh, snowfields full of stony arms in the middle of the night in their home terrain, uh, combat is over. Yeah, no. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, on like... that... <laughs> oh, keep going. I'm gonna yawn and, like, crawl back in my tent where it's warm. <laughs> Um, on that note, we will be taking our break. So we will continue uh, at 10.30 Eastern, so 15 minutes from now. All right, cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
He doesn't sleep in his armor when he's in the city. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Everybody gains the benefits of a long rest. The rest of the night passes without any um, any issues. In the morning at dawn, Astraeus would do his uh, like morning prayers to to Mitros. Okay. And uh, uh, one of the things that I just realized is the blessing of foresight is something I can use whenever I cast a divination spell mm -hmm. and that uh, helm of comprehending languages lets me cast comprehend languages at will mm. so he'll basically spend uh, part of his morning prayers blessing each person uh, in the party who is willing to accept a blessing from Michos uh, anyone who is so inclined will gain three temporary hit points oh Phil will definitely take it in cherish the moment he spent uh the first time astraeus does this he would awkwardly sort of move towards kira and then pause as if unsure as to whether or not she would accept a blessing from mitros oh yeah she shrugs yeah she doesn't, doesn't have any mother issues okay and uh yeah, and he's like, yeah, to the whole party, so the NPCs and, and anybody who is willing to take the blessing. Okay. Uh, after the shit that they have seen, um, the NPCs are more than willing to take any blessings that are available. And uh, that would include any familiars that want it? <laughs> uh, so how much was it? The Lopez Reese will take it. <laughs> it's it's three temporary hit points because uh, my wisdom is very low. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my wisdom was uh, just high enough to allow me to be a cleric mm. until I get my oh 
a much much higher level when I when I pull an ASI to to boost it a little bit. And uh, we're gonna harvest the Yetis. Mm. Okay. Before you went back to bed, I'm assuming. Yeah. All right. Hold on then. There's like the slightest sort of like record scratch kind of sound. It's really weird. It's Hypatia. Um, oh, it is. Or I'm something. sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's been all day. I'm not yeah. even gonna lie. Yeah. Okay. Constant scratching in my ears. <laughs> all right. Uh, I need a knowledge check on the Yetis. So uh, this would be nature. Knowledge nature. Uh, tell us what been how we we would have been doing it together, of course. Okay, you guys are bu buddying up on this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the things that you know about a yeti is you have heard that their eyes, while difficult to harvest, have powerful magic, as Talos learned firsthand. Um, so if you can harvest them, they can be used to make a type of potion related to the cold. Uh, you know that their hide is a key ingredient in making boots of the Winterlands. Uh, and you know that their tongue uh, has no special properties, uh, but it is believed by many uh, to essentially be um, uh, like... Uh, basically it just allows you to shout louder and have like a stronger voice that's what people think um so it does have a very uh valuable market value of uh 10 gold per tongue the tongue is very large though but essentially they dry the tongue turn it into like a, a powder um and then people uh brew like a tea out of it okay all right, so if that is the case, uh, you're harvesting from this creature. It's going to be a survival check, or if you have the harvesting tools, you would do uh, or harvesting kit proficiency. You could use that instead. What skill would the harvesting proficiency use? Intelligence or? Uh, in this case, um, you your intelligence was trying to figure out the lore behind it and what you needed this would be a, a steady hand to um cut the hide loose um get the tongue out without damaging it extract the eyes all that so this would be dexterity okay 16. well 16 with the uh, tail so. okay all right uh you are able to extract uh, both eyes the hide and the tongue uh, from the first yeti. Uh, you may attempt the second one. All right, and and off the second one. And do they? Can we also cut off? Can I also cut off these horns just as like a trophy? Yeah, I mean you could do whatever you want with it. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, but um, as far as like mechanical harvesting, that that's what you got off of the, okay. the harvesting. The two hides, four eyes, and two tongues. Mm -hmm. uh, the hides are large and heavy, uh, 70 pounds each. That's a pretty heavy hide. <laughs> uh, let me see. I mean, it's a 20 foot high uh, Yeti, so it's a lot of hide. Uh, the crazy thing is, is that um, of the hide, only select parts of it are quality enough uh, to be used to make Boots of the Winterlands. Okay, well, that's gonna, that's way too heavy. I can't, uh, can't carry those around. Okay. Uh, does anyone have a, some kind of bag that can hold stuff? Looks at Kyra. Hey, Auntie, you're always pulling stuff out no, of the bag. No, mm, mm We're not putting that in this bag. Nope. That's not happening. That's gross. You don't we even need really boots. Your dad gave you his shoes. For the people. Which, by the way, I don't even know how that's working. Like, can you even feel your feet? 
Uh, and as she says that, the camera kind of pans down to the two blocks of ice that are your winged sandaled feet that have just been sort of dying slowly in this uh, in this extreme cold. I have an exceptional constitution. My feet are fine, and I kind of like wiggle my toes and like chunks of ice fall off. Yeah, toes aren't really moving too much, so... You might want to thaw those. These old things? <laughs> so, um, what next? Do you make your way through the plains of uh, Frosty Hands? Rested and rejuvenated as you are? Very slowly in single file. Okay. Um, looking down at the hands... Do any of them look to be in a different place or have moved at all throughout the Oof. Um, man, that would be a investigation check. I ask Hypatia, who has a uh, wonderful intelligence. Uh, she well, has almost a keen mind, one would yeah, say. Yeah, almost oh. a keen mind. Like Except she yeah. that would I have seen really the scene. paying attention. <laughs> So as you sleepy. as you look, uh, the hands. Um, I mean, it could just be a trick of your eyes or your memory. Uh, some of them do seem to be in slightly different positions than they were before. Perhaps we just in the sa- in the same way that a plant is always moving, but may- maybe too slow for the human eye to see. Let's just avoid them. All right. Uh, so you kind of wind your way through uh, the forest of hands, slowly but surely making your way further up into the mountains. Uh, as you do, um, you can tell right away where Telemach is because it has a total like um, Mount Doom, um, like not Mount Doom, that's a volcano. Uh, Doom Mountain? What was the one from Zelda that always had a big old cloud around the top? Death of it? Mountain. Death Mountain, thank you. It has a very Death Mountain vibe in that the snowstorm that perpetually um, is going uh, is easily seen uh, from a distance. So this is not a place that is welcoming to those who would pilgrimage to see the heroes of this land. Yeah, it's almost like the guy that's in charge of weather really hates these people. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> All right. Um, you yeah, guys... just leave that in the snow for whoever can find it. <laughs> As you Why guys don't you wind... just wear one? Wind your way through. I mean, you can wear it. It's seventy pounds. <laughs> you're 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 a brick shit house. <laughs> yeah, All I don't right. know. Somehow. I guess I could drop all this fucking rope I'm carrying around. All right, I'll just ab- abandon a bunch of rope and I'll carry one hide. I appreciate you adhering to uh, encumbrance rules. It means a lot to me. Thank you. All right, um, I, I, I drop nine bunches of rope, nine fifty foot long rope. If anyone wants some rope, I had a lot of it. <laughs> Were you just like? Did you, was it just coiled around your uh, chest? Like you looked like yeah, you were oh, yeah, a little uh, of rope? And I got a backpack just full of rope. That's not even all my rope. Like, I still got a bunch. <laughs> this is a key aspect of Philippicles I was unaware of. <laughs> I think like, I said it in the very first episode. He's rope is very time. important. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you He's probably a survivalist. Did. He's a survivalist. Speaking <laughs> of survivalist, um, you guys, as you make your way through, you do see that there are more Yeti tracks uh, in the area. Some of them uh, are as fresh as a couple of hours ago leading you to believe that more yetis came back and watched you sleep. Creepy. Yeah, awesome. I mean, they also probably watch us skin their fellows, so <laughs> hopefully yeah. they're more scared of us than we are of them. Totally. Um, as you make your way uh, up into the mountains that lead to Telemach, uh, it triggers, I believe, some more flavor text. 
that's what I'm here for. It's a sweet, sweet award-winning uh, writer uh, flavor text. Here we go. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Um, you follow the path leading up into the Mithril Mountains. Uh, it is commonly known as the Path of the Dead because it is the only way to reach the necropolis at Telemach. It is utterly quiet, but we'll leave this comforting Skyrim music on anyways. Uh, there are no bird calls, no insects, and no animal life at all. There is animal unlife. Uh, you do see a skeletal fox, uh, as well as uh, some sort of zombified birds that can't really fly anymore, and just sort of like limp through the snow uh the story is that everything that dies near um the necropolis rise as undead does not seem to be exaggerated uh it grows colder as the path gains height and the light covering of snow changes to a heavy snowfall and soon a blizzard as you continue to make your way through these conditions, uh, it is through the uh, skills of your party members that no one uh, slides down the mountain, is blown off of uh, narrow cliffs, and killed, etc., etc. As the storm intensifies even further, you realize um, Anastasia and junior pilot um, Philippocles that flight uh, could be treacherous. Um, if you are unfamiliar with uh, flying in a snowstorm. Up ahead, you do see the entrance to the necropolis, uh, a narrow um, gap in the stone of the mountain. Leading to it is an ominous bridge of ice. This narrow path is treacherous, and either side of it falls hundreds of feet into a dark ravine below. Down in the ravine, you can see the hazy glow of teal light. Um, yeah. So the sounds of the blizzard and the silence uh, beyond that are eventually joined by the lulling song of... Uh, some beautiful singing. So let me put you guys over on this here map. Man, it is like you guys are getting off a bus at a convention whenever I drop your whole <laughs> your whole squad into stuff. Um, and it's very Baldur's Gate because there's like a million and a half more NPCs like scattered throughout the adventure that want to join you. But I feel like there's just a certain point where it's like you capping out on, on NPCs. I don't know what you're talking. We're taking all of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think we've we've hit upon a pretty good solution for NPCs in this campaign. So which is just to give the entire NPC squad one initiative and then one NPC from the squad gets to contribute. Um, all right. So, there was actual blizzard overlay, but given the issues that uh, we had with regular snow, I just went ahead and removed them. Um, suffice to say, this map is dark to sort of simulate the poor um, visibility of a blizzard, and you can just imagine there's swirly blizzard stuff going on. All right. Uh, do you guys see yourselves here at the Path of the Dead? Oh, is that what this is called? Yeah. <laughs> is this yeah. where we see ourselves in three years? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, so on either side of this path uh, is a tremendous fall to a dark yet glowy um, abyss below. Um, the entrance to Telemach waits for you on the other side of the bridge and there is um a song uh the song itself is uh in sylvan and it's mostly just a harmony but those of you who speak sylvan uh it is making cloying promises to you 
of uh, things that will be done to you that will uh, ease all of the suffering of your life, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Anastasia, your um, secret racism uh, triggers, and you know that these are the songs of harpies. Oh. Yeah. Not saying you are a racist, just saying that of all the races in Thylea, your people are the most insulted by and hurt by the existence of harpies. Sounds pretty racist. <laughs> <laughs> I really... I mean, how, it's, how you yep. personally carry that, uh, that history with you is what makes you a better person. But, uh, yeah, like, uh, sirens don't like harpies, so... Yeah. I can't imagine a single I mean, fan that, that doesn't have race. It's fault at all. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They were cursed. Uh, yeah. They were cursed. Yeah. But yeah. But they are a horrible, um, twisted bastardization of your race. So, I mean, there's that. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can still warn everyone that it might be pertinent to uh, close their ear holes. Maybe. I don't know if that'll help. Bridge is ominous. Maybe we should tie each other together with some rope. <laughs> Did you bring rope? Oh, no. yeah, I got tons of rope. <laughs> <laughs> I have the I ability had... to make you deaf if you want. Uh, Astraeus will um, tear off some, some cloth. Oh, actually, you have a bunch of Yeti hide. Can we pull off clumps of that to stuff our ears? Yeti muffs. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I can, just, just, I can right. just cut up some rope, and then you as, can just stuff. As you are here. discussing what to do, I need each of you to make a wisdom saving throw, because the song you see has already been heard. All right. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Some high rolls tonight. Mm, 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 mm. Oh yeah, I got a roll for all your NPC squad too. Oh Jesus. Okay. Um, would we be bringing them all the way in, or would we be leaving them? You gonna leave them out in the middle of a blizzard in Yeti territory? Is oh that, no, no, no. Is that no, where no, you no. want to leave no, your NPCs? Is that no, no. How you do business. No, okay. No. <laughs> uh, Lorius has advantage, so he makes it because magic resistance. Uh, let's see. I feel like she shouldn't have to roll, but I'll roll anyways. Uh, let's see. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Kyra starts swaying to the music. Like, yeah. Yeah. This is pretty good. Uh, Karina. Mm -hmm. No problem. No problem. Uh... I guess, do I need to roll for the puppy? Oh, I'll roll for him. Okay. Oh, wait, he's not a humanoid or a giant, so he was actually fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you're not a humanoid or a giant, you don't need to roll. Wait, so. does that mean a god has to roll? Is there, are they human? Well, you're asking a lot of personal questions here. But yeah, she did have to roll, and uh, she did fail. So, welcome to Thylea, where gods could fail super low saving throws. Um, Where is your legendary god of assistant? music? <laughs> the god of music, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She snaps her fingers. Oh, yeah. Legendary resistance. My bad. Boop. There we go. <laughs> oh, god. Thanks. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> it's just, the music was so good. I almost like, forgot myself. I can't I even like, believe you right now. <laughs> what? It's just really good music. I mean, it's very chill. I don't know. It's so kind of nice. see where you draw your inspiration. Well, I... Maybe. I mean, if we kill these harpies, I could steal this music and it's technically not steal it because it's not alive anymore. Anyways, um... You guys should probably roll initiative. Um, if you're gonna cross this thing. Because there are harpies, there are... They are lurking and they are singing. So... Alrighty. And team NPC, here we go. Damn. Oh, 
Damn, Team NPC. All right. Uh, so Kyra with the 29 repping uh, Team NPC says, um, "Are we good? Do we need anything? I know this Counter is like thing. the <sighs> that's thing like... off. Oh my God, that's what a real bard does. Um, you gotta understand NPCs, right? We have different abilities than PCs. <laughs> like we, f okay, we function totally different." Um, than that. So, sure, I'll sing a counter song, wink, wink, and she just sings the lucky song again. You could just pretend it's that. It didn't, like, a, a, a sheep give you, like, a bonus to your saves or something. I shouldn't have to do all this stuff for you all the time. Um, all right. That Is being that said... Is sheep? Huh? What? That sheep thing's a one use, right? Yes, you have yeah. one charge of legendary resistance. If you think I'm not saving them for the final battle, yeah. <laughs> also, I have, I have a quick question. Um, we all rolled saves. What uh, was there a DC? Oh yeah, attack? sorry. Uh, anyway? Anybody that got, uh, let me let me check those saves. Um, so, going up here, uh, Phil. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Uh, Anastasia, Hypatia. And Astraeus. No, no, Phil's nine was for uh, Philippa threes before he knew that he could. Oh, okay, okay. So, twenty. So Phil rolled a nat twenty. That's right up here. So yeah. it would just be Astraeus, Hypatia, and Anastasia. Okay. Um, yeah. So while you are listening to the song, um, you are uh, let's see, incapacitated. And um, you just sort of stand there swaying, uh, doing nothing. Um, once you catch sight of a harpy, though, you must use... The only action you could take is to move towards them at your highest possible movement rate, uh, burning your action to dash if necessary. Um, you will take a direct route to get there, um, but you don't avoid opportunity attacks. Uh, while moving in such a manner. Um, if it would lead you to something dangerous, like running, say, off of a cliff, uh, you get one additional saving throw to snap out of it before uh, you leap to your death. So good thing there's no cliffs around, though. Whew, that would be bad. Um, all right. So that being said... Uh, yeah, a, uh, a harpy uh, kind of flies uh, from underneath the bridge into view, and uh, she uh, she beckons. Uh, and who wouldn't want to go get with that? Huh? Yeah. Um, she beckons you to come to her. Uh, those of you who are um, ensnared by this uh by such songs uh, from these harpies when your turn comes up uh you gotta try to get to her uh as best you can all right and she is flying above the uh abyss here all right Did we get a chance to tie ropes amongst each other first uh you did not as or? soon as you uh, as soon as the flavor text mentioned the music you had to make your saves so this is a charm effect uh, I have advantage because I'm it a hand is. Though. It is a charm effect. I rolled so, a 19. <laughs> okay. Good for you. I'm very happy for you. Uh, all right. So this one comes out and continues singing. Uh, I believe they can maintain the song as a bonus action. So it will take the dodge action, as will the other one, as they continue singing and trying to lure you into leaping to your death. Very Greek uh, mythology there. Talus, uh, you're up. All right, first thing, uh, I'll have Paratus use his piercing screech on me, so I'll take D6 damage. Okay. Um, you do make a saving throw against it, right? It's a constant. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't willingly fail a constitution save. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, your constitution is out of your control. It is your body trying to protect itself. Uh, I think a 12 is enough. Uh, you, uh, despite it screaming directly in your ears, ear hole, uh, you are not silent or uh, deafened. Yep. All right. Okay. What, el uh, what else you got, Talos? Uh, then Talos himself will move. 
here. Okay. And throw our shocker at this one here. Alright, throwing chakram at the southernmost one. Got it. Uh, 15 is enough. It takes 9 points of damage. And uh, that'll be it for it. Okay. Uh, as your turn ends, it is Reset's turn. Uh, he attacked the bottom one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I'll shoot it. Okay. Seventeen, uh, 17 hits. Yeah, are you gonna use her once per day charm effect? No, no, no. Okay, it takes nine damage. Uh, these harpies uh, live in a necromantic, uh, blizzard-laden um, mountain. They seem to be extremely hardy. Uh, they are taking these hits uh, like champions. These are not the wimp-ass harpies that witnessed you. Um, f uh, Doing the or the the sacrifice of the um, at the river at the Rock of Esther. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Anything else from Reset? Um, no. Okay. Uh, you, you as your turn ends uh, here, and those of you nearby, Karina, Anastasia, Kyra, uh, you hear a very familiar. Um, sort of simian roar coming from further down the mountain. Uh, it is coming towards you guys. Oh, from behind? Mm-hmm. Uh, you anticipate... Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, you anticipate that the yetis will more than likely be joining you shortly. <laughs> Alright, that brings us to Skilla the Killer. Alright. Gonna fly up to this one. Okay. Um, provide the help action. And then fly back a little bit. Alright. Fair enough. Uh, Astraeus, who is a half-elf who made his save? What are you going to do? Uh, he's going to step forward and uh, can he notice that Taipaki is all glassy-eyed? Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, it, it, When you're incapacitated, it's pretty obvious. Yep. Awesome. Uh, I, I'm i going to grapple Taipaki. Okay. Um, uh, she's incapacitated, so she fails automatically. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> That's good, because I'm not very good at grappling. Um, I am going to start uh, dragging her. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. Incapacitated creature can't take actions or reactions. I guess technically she could try to push away from you. So, Hypatia, give me a... Which, whichever is better, uh, acrobatics or athletics. As you sort of subconsciously try to keep yourself free from him. Uh, all right, so you do grab her. Okay. Okay, so this turn I can only move to here, and if you can plant yourself there, Hypatia. Yeah. All right. And, yep. Okay, that brings us to Philippicles. Yeah, uh, Phil's going to do the same thing. Bonus action, grapple Anastasia. All right, Anastasia, give me the best of what you've got. Uh, acrobatics or athletics. Oof. As you try to grab her, she just sort well, of like... Doesn't a tie go to the attacker? Uh, a tie does not go to the attacker. Uh, a tie on an imposed uh, skill check like that uh, causes no change in status. Alright, well then I'm gonna yeah. use my action to grapple her. Okay. Alright, so she kind of fans her uh, her feathers, uh, kind of pushing you away subconsciously. Uh, you kind of dip around them and try again. You do grab a hold of her. And uh, please move yourself behind me as I move across the bridge. Quick! Get across this bridge! Alright, uh, let's see... So 
So if they're incapacitated, does that mean they they actually can't even try and break out of our grapples? Uh, well, it's interesting because when their turn comes up, if they can see a harpy, they will do whatever they can to try to get to the harpy. So I mean, they'll try to they'll, you know burn their action to try to escape, but as long as you guys hold on to them, it shouldn't be a problem. And then they'll also get a save before they leap off the side. So you, you should be good. All right. Uh, as you begin heading across the bridge, uh, let's see. I think this one is going to stay hidden uh, beneath the bridge for now. All right. Uh, Hypatia, uh, you can try to break free. Uh, athletics or acrobatics? Oh, damn. Damn it, Hypatia, you're not making this easy. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, we roll, right? Did she sing? Uh, yeah, you oh, yeah. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she she did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so I'd, like re-roll Hi- I'd like to re-roll Hypatia's, actually. All right, Hypatia, oh, okay. roll a new acrobatics check for me. Okay. Okay. There we go. go. All right. Uh, so as she kind of goes limp like a sack of uh, potatoes uh, and almost slips from your grasp, uh, she doesn't. All right. Uh, that will be your turn then, Hypatia, because your speed is zero, and other than trying to get to the the harpy, you can't do anything. Okay. All right, Soul, you're up. <laughs> Can um, Soul try and like <laughs> do like the help action, but like a non-helpful help, like give Anastasia disadvantage to get away from Phil, or I guess just help. Uh, Phil? yeah, yeah for sure. Help. Yeah, she could help Phil. Yeah. Okay, uh, so this is kind of like <laughs> grab grab onto your hair and pull you with me. <laughs> so yeah. Anastasia, you uh, you know, you, you feel bad for these creatures, cursed as they are. Um, maybe you could fly over, and go kissy kissy kissy. Um, but you got to yeah. break free really of this guy to. first. I really want to. Oh, apparently not. Apparently not. Um, I don't think Phil even no, has to roll. Uh, roll. yeah. No, let's give him bad rolls up. I'm totally bad. <laughs> All right, top of the round, um, Kyra calls out to you guys. Um, yes, yeah, so there's Yetis coming up the mountain, and you guys really didn't, you know, maximize my lucky song there, which kind of sucks. Uh, so I'm gonna start moving, you know, safety in numbers. Well, any uh, any NPC can take it, can do their action in the middle of uh, the NPC round, right? Well, they're all acting together to move at this point. Um, but okay. she, yeah. But uh, if you want, like Karina could take a shot. Yeah, yeah. I can say yeah. Karina take a shot instead of Kyra. Yeah, sure. Uh, so here we go. She will fire her longbow twice because NPCs have different abilities. Uh, that is a miss and a I'll miss. Re- Does do we still get the reroll or did Kyra's turn come up? No, Kyra's Kyra's turn is hap- It has started. Yeah, so. Um, all right, so she fires, and the arrows are just whipped away by the uh, blizzard. Well, right. which one did she fire at? Because this one had the help edge. Yeah. Uh, I mean, an eleven is still an eleven because it's dodging, right? Oh, so, okay, okay, it is yep, dodging. Okay. Um, all right, that brings us to uh, this harpy to the north. Uh, uh, yeah, it just continues swooping around, uh, singing. Uh, as its bonus action, and then it is going to... Uh... Oh, nice. That is pretty cool. Um, you know what, though? It is going to stay where it is and take the dodge action again. Uh, same thing with this one down here. It is just going to keep singing and take the dodge action, trying its best to draw your allies towards it. If they are singing, do we need to continue saving, or is it one of those save once and you're good for a bit? Uh, because there are three, they could essentially try and charm you three times. They have not tried the second or third attempt yet. Yet. Yeah. Uh, alright. Uh, Talus, you're up. Alright. The first of the Yetis will arrive this turn. I'll send Paracles over here. Having to do a claw attack. Alright, so uh, the, yep, the creature just kind of dodges and moves out of the way. Uh, 
and then Palace will throw a shock. Okay. Uh, 15 does hit, takes 9 points of damage. Alright, anything else from Talus? Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot I can do. Alright, you do see, perhaps, uh, at the other end of the uh, chasm, the entrance to uh, Telemach. Alright, Reset, you're up. Alright, um, I'm going to take out my alchemy jug. And before okay. I do anything stupidly scientific again, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. is oil or water better in this situation to make <laughs> it slippery? Oil. Oil? Yeah, oil. Okay. I will pour oil into these spaces. Okay. And then I will run down here. All right. All right. As your turn uh, ends, uh, the first of the Yetis uh, arrives. They knew about this place and knew that this would be an excellent time to try and grab some of these tasty intruders. As this guy comes rushing into the scene, uh, I am going to have him make a saving throw. Um, it's not going to be as powerful as a grease spell, but I will roll to see if he is uh, knocked prone by all this. Uh, let's see. Dexterity saving throw or fall prone. All right, here we go. Uh, why is it not rolling his thing? Roll 20. Believe in yourself. You could do it. Maybe? Maybe? Has anybody seen it show up yet? No. Oh, oh, there we go. There it is. All right. Sweet. He makes it. All right. Uh, as it comes rushing in, it kind of uh, skids in the uh, oil and then lets out a feral roar of outrage. Uh, despite its large size uh, and its long simian arms, uh, it cannot reach anyone uh, with attacks and it had to dash to get here. Skilla, you're up. All right, taking a cue from Soul, she is also going to try and uh, help Astraeus <laughs> pull Mom across. All right, fair enough. Uh, okay. Oh, also at this point, um, oh, it's it's not your turn yet. Okay, uh, that brings us to Astraeus. Got it. All right. Uh, so he'll he'll dash um, forward. Okay. Uh, reset's gonna cost me double move. Uh, you know what? He'll zigzag. He doesn't care. Uh, okay. Well, something he doesn't care. He's in that much of a rush. So uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, about thirty. Uh, and then Hypatia, right? Yeah. So he's just dragging her across. Um, he'll be trying to like. You know, snap fingers in front of her, wave his hands, try and cover mm -hmm. her eyes. Uh, he doesn't have a free hand really to like cover both her ears, unfortunately. Um, but uh, he'll ask Talus to try and cover her ears. All right, Philippocles, uh, you're up. Uh, I actually need a. I'm looking something up real quick. It's the first time I'm gonna ever use them. Okay. D &D. Um, yeah, so I have uh, some ball bearings okay. on my person, and I'm going to follow Reset's lead. Reset is honestly just so smart. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, throw the ball bearings and layer them on top of the oil to try and make, a, make it even more difficult for them. Fair enough. Okay. And then I'm going to continue to drag Anastasia. Mm 
I have two bags of ball bearings, so that was one bag that I threw. Alright, as you uh, begin dragging her across the bridge, uh, the third harpy, who is uh, harmonizing but not singing yet, uh, flies out from under the bridge and hovers in the air above Astraeus, uh, Talus, and Hypatia. Uh, actually, want to just go here? Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Um, it'll hover above all of you. It is going to use Hovering Darkness. Um, it begins to shake violently, and magical dander from her wings uh, falls down like uh, snow. Um, whipped by the wind, uh, it is sooty and black, uh, and it clings to you as it lands. I need everyone within 20 feet of uh, this creature to make constitution saving throws. This is a, a real bad one, so you definitely uh, want to pass this one. Oh, look at those constitution saves. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> I'll uh, use it then. Use what? My resistance. Oh my well, goodness. see what happens first. I well, mean, he's I'm, not gonna, real I'm, bad one. I'm not going to say what happens until I know who's locked in the results. Yeah. I'll use it. Well, isn't you can okay. choose to succeed after you fail? Or is that a different? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just oh, that's, that's how it works. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I can also choose to reveal what happens when you fail until I'm completely sure that I've milked that uh, resistance out of you. Eh, eh, eh. Um, all right. So anyone that got a... Is everybody done rolling? That's in there? Uh, this is not just a humanoid thing. This is anybody who is affected by sleep or poison. Oh, I have advantage if it's poison. Okay. I think I'm I'm immune if it's magic putting me to sleep. Okay. But I'm I have no defense against poison, so I'm I don't just know hoping that a twelve is good enough. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here we go. If you did not get a fifteen or higher on this Constitution save, uh, you are poisoned, and you fall asleep. Yep, yep. This is right. uh, like a natural poison that's putting us to sleep? On, on top of falling asleep, you will also lay down prone. So you'll be prone, sleeping, and poisoned. Uh, this is a poison that puts you to sleep. I am sleeping. Oh shit, okay. Yeah, that immunity is only ma when magic. Uh, it is sleep. magic, it's magic dander. Oh, okay, then All right. so I'm I awake with poisons. All right. There you go. It's only Phil. So Phil fell asleep, and it looks like maybe Skilla? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, and that is the creature's turn. It is hovering above the bridge right now, um, about 15 feet up. All right, Hypatia, uh, give, me a save, give me a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Okay, yeah, um, you, yeah, you are still after uh, these. But these I want to go ahead and use my thing. Okay, never mind. You are no oh. longer charmed by uh, the song. All right, what are you gonna do? Yeah, you, you um, have your you have your full agency now. Okay, I'm gonna uh, shake Astraeus off of me, like make okay. eye contact. Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah, as soon as he sees that you're like snapped out of it, yeah, he'll let go. Yeah, he looks yeah. very sick. He looks very sick. Um, I'm gonna... Oh boy, what am I gonna do? Um... I'm gonna... Let's see what a firebolt does. I'm gonna firebolt. Uh, the same one that's been attacked yeah. that is dodging, or the one that's up in the air? Or the you gonna... one that's right next to me. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, as you go to fire, um, you can feel uh, the magic kind of get a little screwy. Let's see what happens. Uh, the oh, target of your attack is... Oh, wow. Okay. Um, as the firebolt hits the harpy, um, the harpy kind of 
freezes up for a second, like it and starts to kind of lose altitude. It then starts flying, its eyes blaze with fire, and you see the talons and claws of the harpy are now flaming weapons. Ma- Sorry, magic guys. fails pretty, are the worst. That's pretty that's oh pretty cool God. though. Yeah. Um alright. Anything else from Hypatia? Nope. Okay. Uh, well, wait, I'll move. Run! I'll run. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, for- I forgot I could move. Uh, yeah, we'll go. There. Mm-hmm. Alright, Soul, you definitely feel uh, a bit like uh, copyright infringement is happening here with this whole flaming harpy thing, but uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> Just roll her eyes at everything that's happening. <laughs> Look down at sleeping Phil, and she's going to dive down and try and wake him up. With like a okay, uh, uh, that how do you wake him up? <laughs> you, you, you like you like tweak his nose or like oh damn Four points okay. fire damage. <laughs> Phil, you are wide awake. <laughs> uh, you are still you are still poisoned. Whoa! Yeah, you are still poisoned, Whoa! but you are wide awake. And then whatever movement left is just gonna try and keep Anastasia from going off. Okay. Though, yeah. <laughs> Anastasia, give me a wisdom saving throw. All right, you come to your senses. Uh, what are you gonna do? Um. Okay. Yikes. Um. Gosh, what do I do? Um, you see, like Astraeus waving Hypatia, like to go further down the bridge, and if he sees you, he'd be like waving you to keep going too. Yeah. I will. Reset will also point across the bridge, but she'll also say, "Anna, the Yetis are are afraid of fire." Okay. Um. Um. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. The oil. Yeah. Can I? Oh, I don't have any like. <sighs> what about your? Damage. What about your your? Your circle-y thing. Oh, yeah. Your spear. spear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, if that keeps the Yeti from getting to us. Yeah, I'm going to cast a flaming sphere on top of this Yeti's head and try and, like, okay. slam it down on top and try to ignite that oil, too. Set the sure. whole side of the bridge on fire. Um, so that's my action to do so. Um, and is anyone... Everyone's still okay on health. I can't even click my token. There we go. Um, and then I will, uh, just start going across the bridge. Alright, Yeti's gonna make a dexterity saving throw. Actually, click it. Oh. It takes uh, 15? Alright, it is, uh, yeah, it is messed up by taking the fire. You see its confidence, uh is uh is lowered it's definitely lowered it looks back over its shoulder and it definitely looks scared uh to continue but it looks scared to go back and just the rest of my movement i'll uh go over to here that'll be my turn all right uh that brings us to uh team npc uh team npc is going to hustle uh, they would love to help you guys, but they'd really like to just use a dash action. Uh, but if you yeah, want, just they... use a dash. Oh, okay. <laughs> run, 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 run. All right, they start hustling across the bridge. Um, alrighty. That brings us to uh this this one up here. Uh, this one is helping the other one sing, but has not done its own song. It will. A bust out its song. Everybody within 300 feet of this creature, um, the one to the north. I need you to make wisdom saving throws. So that's just all of us. Uh, yes. I'm gonna use my legendary resistance to pass. Okay. The DC is 15 on this. Alright, and I guess I gotta roll for your NPC squad real quick. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, okay. Kyra fails again. Uh, let's see. Karina. Phil, you get the feeling that she's failing on purpose, it feels like. Um, to sort of stress you out. Uh, but she does use legendary resistance to pass. Um, Alright, Lorius didn't need to roll. I don't know why I did that. Because uh, he is an NPC satyr, so he is technically a fae. Um, Alright, but Karina has been charmed. Uh, she is looking over longingly at this northernmost uh, harpy. Alright. Uh, but it does not get to dodge this turn. Okay. This one to the south, uh, it doesn't have any more people charmed, right? Everybody broke free of its charm? So... Well, I'm charmed now. Oh, yeah, but you're charmed by the one to the north, yeah. not the one to the south. Got it. Um, alright, so it is going to fly over you guys, and it will shake out its dander on everybody. I need constitution saving throws against sleep dander. Oof, we're set. Oh. All right. Uh, you are far enough away, Hepatia. You did not need to roll. You're okay. Oh, sweet. Thank yeah. God. <laughs> what was? Uh, it? can double uh, poison. It's a DC 15 area. if you're within 20 feet of this. Uh, this one right here. I will color code all of them. I guess at this point. So this will be yellow harpy, and then this will be uh red harpy. There we go. I'm asleep again. Oh, jeez. All right. Nappy, Phil. Hey, it's better than jump off the cliff, Phil. Maybe. Um, all right. That brings us to Talus. All right. I am going to try to slow up this Yeti by dropping... Entangle. Oh shit! All right. Uh, let's see. Even if it doesn't stop him, it'll at least make it difficult to rain. Oh yeah. Uh, there's your entangled template. Put it right there. Slow him the most possible again. Hell yeah! Got flaming oil, <laughs> ball bearings, a flaming sphere, and entangle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did it run in away? Yeah. Uh all right, the Bruce is set. We're set. Uh five hundred pounds of flip pleasing gear is asleep next to you. Uh I'm walking to north and okay. I'm going to with my slippers a spider climb, I have to get closer to this thing. So well, I'll use I'm gonna walk along to, the uh, before my turns over, I'll use Paradox to peck Philip please. Oh, fair enough. Okay. Phil, you are uh, now awake um, and uh, still charmed. Okay. All right, so reset. You start walking like sideways, basically, along the um, yep. I icy bridge. Okay. And I guess I dash. Okay. What? Uh, yeah, eighty feet. Right. Uh, this guy right here, he doesn't want to be in a flaming sphere, and he doesn't want to be uh, dealing with all that kind of stuff. Oh, man. He's very strong. Uh, he's very big. So he is going to uh, kind of move over to the side here, and then he is going to try and leap over. Uh, this, I will have him do a strength check to kind of represent, like, his effort. Uh, 15 is pretty good. Um, and given his size and his strength, um, I think he'll still get caught up, but he'll make it probably to here. He had to move through the ball bearings, right? Oh, you're Does right. Does he have to make so, yeah, double deck to, saves? Yeah. For, yeah, One. And two. Also, didn't you Ooh, mention... Ooh, the second, second one would have caught him. Go ahead. I'm okay. Sorry. No. What, Didn't you up? mention they got scared when they got hit by fire, so they have uh, frightened or something? 
Oh yeah, check. they have disadvantage to ability check, so it would add a 10. So yeah, alright, so it slides uh, in the ball bearings and then ends up in your entangle. Uh, now what does it have to do? It has to do a dexterity save, yeah? To avoid being entangled. Uh, and it is trapped in the entangle. Alright, so it is... <laughs> Oh, is it a strength save? Well, I rolled, I rolled a two anyways. So, oh, okay. uh, yeah. So it is uh, restrained and prone, uh, and next to the flaming sphere. <laughs> does, so, it, does it take? Uh, wow, it's so good. It's got disadvantage to this because of all that. Yeah, so it's going to take the full damage. All right. It takes three points of damage, and begins letting out pitiful howls of pain. Uh, another yeti arrives on the scene. <laughs> Sees the the mess that's going on here, <laughs> and it's like walking into like the most messy kitchen. Like, yeah, it's oh, that uh, it's that community it's that community meme where he has the pizzas, but everything's on fire. Yeah, he like <laughs> he like shows up for some ass kicking and sees that everything is an absolute disaster. Um, all right, well done, well done. Uh, Skilla, where are you at, girl? Are you uh snoozing? Snoozing. Okay, Astraeus, to you. All right. Um, very key. Are the Yetis charmed by the song? Uh, yetis are monstrosities. They are not giants or humanoids. Those bastards. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, Talus, thanks for reminding me, Astraeus. Uh, when you see the Yetis, even though the Yetis are being absolute clowns, um, <laughs> you do need to make a saving throw against fear. So give me a wisdom saving throw. Yeah, um, you remember um, nearly dying to one of these creatures just last night. Um, seeing them again, your heart mechanism uh, runs cold, and you uh, you are frightened. You cannot get closer to the Yetis, and you have the uh, status effect of uh, frightened. Uh... All right, Astraeus, what are you going to do? Astraeus is going to... I'm going to use my channel divinity. Okay. And I'm going to beg for uh, uh, Mitros' aid. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to move... Next. Uh, these two harpies ahead of me, they're flying, right? Uh, yes, they're 15 feet in the air. Okay. Um... Yeah, I'm going to have to move under them towards Phil. Okay. And, uh... So, one, two, three, four... All right, great. Um, Astraeus is going to grapple Philippocles. Okay. Uh, he fails automatically because of things. I'm... But we need to have an honest assessment here of your strength, Astraeus. Because Phil a big boy, and he's carrying a lot of equipment. So big. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's more it's not so much I'm trying to drag him or move him more than stop him from moving north. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean I would say that because the ground is icy, you can move one space with Phil at the cost of four spaces of movement with the athletics <laughs> check you just rolled. Uh I don't have I only have two more squares of movement, so I am okay. going to stay where I am. Okay. Uh, actually I will move myself here. All right. Uh, if he goes down, <laughs> we both go down. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Paratos, sorry. Paratos woke me up. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, I saw, like, uh, Soul's thing on top of you. I thought it was, uh, oh, yeah, you, she's you're still asleep. She's asleep. Okay. <laughs> she's snoozing next to you. Got it. On um, okay. <laughs> on top of him. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Phil, you are prone um, and uh, grappled by the mighty Astraeus. Some call him Lil Phil, um, but you need to get to that that woman over there. Your dad's not the only one that's going to specialize in interspecies loving. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and give me athletics, which is better than your acrobatics. Advantage because I'm poisoned. Okay. Okay. You got a one. <laughs> Uh, Astraeus, can you can you beat that? 
I, I can. I'm going to use the uh, the ten on my prophecy die. <laughs> <laughs> you call upon the powers of, of Mitros, leader of the five gods of the settlers of Thylea, to make sure that you get a ten on your athletics check, so that you can keep her grandson uh, from killing himself. Fair what enough. Is, what is more key is that while he's poisoned, I too am poisoned. And so in an equal contest of strength, Kira just watched me stop Philippicles from getting breaking out of a hole from a character with nine strength. Ooh, yeah! Oh, but see, that's the thing, is you had if you had disadvantage, you'd have to, you'd have to sub out for one of the numbers, you'd still take the lower of the two numbers. I don't think so. Does your prophecy completely ignore advantage and disadvantage? Because that's pretty awesome. Does I mean, the, yeah. before you roll it. Oh, is it before you even roll? Is that yeah? That's, you know, yeah. Notice what I, I didn't roll. It's uh -huh. uh, you can replace any attack roll, saving throw, or ability check made by you or a creature you can see with one of these prophecy rolls. Uh, you must choose to do so before the roll is made. Okay. All right. All right. That's so, better than like a wizard diviner in a way, yeah. Like because a yeah, wizard I think diviner. It's the same, isn't it? Nah, no, Wizard Diviner. Wizard Diviner, Diviner makes, uh, it changes the dice roll. Oh, yeah, this, this actually changes this an entire check. It sets a dice roll. Wow, it's that's crazy. I will seek out the counsel of others to see if this is uh, how it works. But for now, we will say that it does. All right. Mm -hmm. um, you call upon her might and hold him in place. Uh, Phil, he's just too strong. He's just too strong. All right. Uh, that is your turn, then. Uh, let's see. Harpy number 12. Uh, let's see. Wow. They can just really just keep doing this. It's not even like a limited use thing. That's crazy. Okay. Um, this Harpy right here is going to fly towards Anastasia with its flaming claws. Uh, Anastasia. Here we go. It is attacking uh holy shit with both four times. Both <laughs> claws and both talons. Uh hold on. It is attacking with its claws and its talons. There we go. Uh alright, so it's two times. Here are the claws, here are the talons. Uh claws. And talons. All right. Uh, looks like the claws hit. Uh, thanks to the blessing of Hypatia, they do an extra three points of fire damage. Sorry. All right. Give me a concentration for your flaming sphere. Uh, okay. Do I get to make a save against the incapacitated too, or no? Uh, what? Because you were attacked. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The song ends. If the harpy, blah blah blah, while charmed, blah blah blah, I uh, can repeat the saving throw. If, it, if its life is a danger, blah 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 blah. Uh, no, uh, they they can actually just carve you up. That is actually a normal harpy ability. Is they will lure you to you and then just shred you, and you'll do nothing to stop them. It's crazy. Uh, damage does not give you a, uh, a save. Wait, didn't you say if your life is in danger, isn't getting clawed by a harpy? According to this, if your life is endangered by the route you're going to take to get to the harpy. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, alright, so yeah, she, uh, flies up and starts shredding Anastasia. Uh, so that's a thing. Uh, that brings us to Hypatia. Alright. This is just... This is not going well. Um, no one's fallen into the abyss of necrotic uh, doom. I mean, that's good. I guess so. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna do some magic missileing. Okay. I'm gonna do a second level magic missileing, and I'm gonna do it at this chick, the okay. one that is flaming. All right. She well, takes an sucks. ass load of uh, magic missiles. 
She whirls around, uh, her claws and talons flaming, and uh, lets out a, a screeching cry at you. And then I'm gonna yell out, like, do I keep running? <laughs> I, I feel like we're in a bad place, but I will keep running if you want me to. I mean, I, I, I want you to keep running, but I really don't know how the hell I'm going to get Phil out of here. I need something to break his charm. I mean, we could let him go and hope for the best. That would break it. <laughs> I could feather fall him. I don't know that that would do any good, but I could. That's true. That's true. You do, you do remember, he can fly. Okay. Well. I don't know. Pyra puts a hand on your shoulder and then motions towards the entrance to Telemach. Okay. Okay, guys. I'll, uh, I'll go. Okay. I keep running. Alright. Soul, you schnoozing. Yeah, I just kind of nestle up into Phil's beard, try and make a nest <laughs> unconsciously. Okay, it's very, it's the it's, warmest it's you fire. felt in a long, yeah, it's the warmest <laughs> you felt in a long time, Phil. Um, all right, uh, Anastasia. What is it a wisdom uh, save? Uh, wisdom save, yeah, to see if you snap out of it in time. Uh, you do. You regain your faculties. Okay, and so all right, I'm only. <laughs> So who sang to me before, and who hasn't sung to me? Uh, so you, the yellow and the purple have sung. And the okay. purple is still singing. Okay. Um, um, let's see. How, how far is this flaming sphere? Oh, it's just far enough away. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep it there. <sighs> okay. Um... Um, take a disengage action and keep going. Okay. Um, okay. This. Um, bonus action. Well, yeah, you know what? I will just ram it into the sky on the ground because I can. But I'll sure. just leave it in its same spot. So that's a bonus action. Okay. It uh, bounces off that guy deals some damage. Wow. Alright, two. two points of damage. Slow and steady. That chip damage. Alright. Uh, Kyra is going to sing the lucky song and NPC squad is going to shuffle further down the thing. Uh, worst case scenario, Hypatia, you start a new adventuring party, you and the NPCs. So, okay. So, all right. Sounds good. Is Lorius dragging Kyra? Or, um... Oh yeah, he's dragging the pu He's got the puppy. Kyra just keeps using her legendary resistance to pass. Oh, you mean about uh, our cutie right here? Yep. Yes, Lorius would definitely. Uh, Lorius and Philippocles are gonna drag her. <laughs> um, let's see. She's got that. Uh, which was a twelve. Lorius has also got a twelve, but he's gonna do it at advantage. Because three can help it. There we go. All right. So yeah, uh, they are still dragging her along. All right. Uh, I guess all three of them are carrying her in like, <laughs> like teamwork style. <laughs> um, all right. That brings us to High Mountain Harpy. Uh, all right. Uh, reset. You have come over to visit. Uh, this harpy uh, sees you approach, and it is going to. Oof. I'm curious what's going to happen with this. Uh, it will shake its dander at you. Uh, give me a constitution save. Oof. Lucky. All right. You do have you do have the lucky song. You want to try again? I'm incapacitated. Can I hear it? No. Uh, yeah, let's let's incapacitated see. means you can't take actions or reactions. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll use it. Okay. Oof. All right. Uh, you yet. are, you are not poisoned, and you are not uh, asleep. Um, 
and the harpy just kind of flies uh, a little bit further away from you. Oh, that's rude. All right. Okay, the other harpy uh, down here that does not have flamey claws. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, it is going to fly over to... Uh, let's see. What's the speed here? 80. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Uh, Talus, it is swooping down at you. It is going to try and grapple you. Uh, give me an athletics or acrobatics. Oh, he's lucky. All right. You're trying to beat a 21 here. Uh, Oof. Oh. All right. <laughs> she pick you up. Uh, she uses the rest of her movement to fly out, and she chucks you off the side. Okay, I can reaction feather fall on Talus. <laughs> okay, Talus, you begin gently falling. Uh, can you post up feather fall? Because... Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, she's a, you fall 60 feet for round. So, you, all right, you fall 60 feet down. Okay. You can also pick five other creatures, too. <laughs> uh, is mean... anybody else falling, though? Uh, it only lasts for... Oh, until you hit the ground. Uh, oh, so it doesn't yeah, work if yeah. you're not And you have to target, target yeah. fall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe just if I reset, but she's too far. Yeah. Yeah, oh. I, reset is too far. I cannot help her. All right. Uh, that brings us to uh, Talus' turn. You are 60 feet down from uh, the bridge and your allies. Uh, down below, you can see a bone-laden uh, ravine full of uh, swirling shadows and ominous uh, magical lights. Uh, mm -hmm. You you anticipate that you will hit the bottom at the rate that you are falling in three more turns? Yeah, I think it's a 200-foot fall. Okay. So now I'm out of line of sight from the Yeti, so I'm no longer frightened. Yeah. I'm double-checking the depth of this here uh, canyon. Uh, let's see. Oh my god. Uh, sorry, it's a 500 foot fall. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be falling for a but, while. But it, this lasts for a minute, so you're, yeah. you're good. You'll still land okay. You won't die. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you won't die from the fall, but... Yeah, well, you'll... Okay, yeah. Yeah. There's some pretty horrible stuff down there. Um, well, do you have anything to attach yourself to a wall nearby? Nope. You don't. I I'm free falling right now. There's nothing I can do. Grappling on. You can try <laughs> grappling something on the wall. There's no with walls arranged. nearby. What wall? Oh, the wall well, here, of the canyon. Within the wall 30 the feet. You're within 30 yeah. feet. Do you have any sort of rope or anything you can extend from your body? That's that's an awkward question to ask someone. If they can extend <laughs> rope from their body. I think she's beating on the bush for like mm -hmm. thorn whip and like. <laughs> thorn whip, maybe. Oh, that's that's hella meta. Wow. Um, okay. Well, if he's See, going to die. Mm, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, Talos, if you are done with your turn, I'm gonna go to reset. Um, no, I'm going to. Well, it hasn't even been my turn. Yet, so. It it is your turn. Oh shoot! It is my turn. Okay. Mm hmm. That's what this is all about. I'm going to fly Paracos over here. Okay. And... I'm going to attack the Harvey for dropping me. Okay. Uh, it does not hit. Okay. And I guess I'll try to use the Vine Whip to grab the edge. Okay. I'm not sure what do I need to roll. So you would just make a vine, vine Whip attack. All right, so let's see. Thorn Whip. It does Thorn not whip. if I succeed, I get to move 10 feet. 
Uh, yeah. All right. Um, go ahead and give me a caster check because this is your first time trying to do something outside the box with the um, the spell. So if it keys off of wisdom, you're just gonna roll a wisdom check. <laughs> Oof. All right. I love um, you. Oh, you're gonna lucky it. Okay. Roll it again. Oh, uh, two sevens in a row. As you go and whip at the wall, um, it hits the wall and ice cracks and splinters. Uh, and it pulls back shards of ice and stone. It does not manage to uh, grab onto anything that could uh, pull you closer to it or anchor you in place. Problem being, though, also, as soon as I grab it onto the side, I lose feather fall. So, uh, you continue uh, your slow descent towards the ground. All right. Uh, we'll have you fall on Hypatia's initiative count. Uh, but you're sort of constantly falling. It's weird. Abstract combat time. Reset. Uh, you're up. Do I get a saving throw? Or is it? You do. Yeah, wisdom saving throw. Uh, you come to your senses. Looking around, you are in a very unusual place. Um, I'm, yeah, I see everyone across. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna keep running across the wall. Okay. And I see this one here. Mm hmm mm hmm Eight. Um, do I see, he's too far now, right? He's 60 feet down. I don't really have dark, um. Yeah, it's it's uh it's shadowy. There's a blizzard. Yeah, it's the whole thing. This is a cool yeah, blizzard I will... effect that we can't even see because Roll Twenty won't run our animations tonight. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, I will use two bronze feather, just a bronze feather on this one, because I put away the bow earlier to use the oil. All right. It just gets picked up by the wind uh, from the snowstorm and just kind of blows away. And I think we said I can't throw a weapon as bonus action. So that would be... That would be I would it. use a key point to step of the wind. Okay. And that. All right. You dash along the wall. Fair enough. All right. Uh, this Yeti... He's holding his pizza boxes. He's looking at the flaming uh, rec room. Uh, he looks back over his shoulder, and you hear a much larger, more ominous bellow. He swallows hard in his throat, and he's going to fucking try to run through all this shit. <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, give me a dexterity. All right, give me another dexterity. Damn, boy. Okay. Um, disadvantage yeah, because he's uh, afraid of the fire. Well, he hasn't been damaged by the fire. Um, if he, if they get, get damaged, damaged well, now, into it? Oh, well, no, now, if, if he ends his turn next to it, uh, he has to make the well, same. I mean, he didn't take damage from the fire he just ran through? Oh, the actual fire on the ground. Yeah, he would take five points of fire damage. All right. Uh, all right. In that case, I would say as he runs through, yeah, he will fall prone. And now he will have to make a strength save to see if he avoids being... Is that the one I'm making? Strength for Entangle? Uh, yep. Uh, right. yep. Then he is prone and... Uh, no, he's not. He's prone, but he is not restrained. Got it. Yeah, my spell DC is only a 12. But now that he's prone and he ended his turn there... Uh, well, I think he has some movement left, but difficult terrain... Mm. Maybe quarter movement. Yeah. If I was a good artist, I would just love to see a rendition of what is going on right here. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, it it's gonna so good in my mind. It is going to make a fourteen saving throw against the flaming sphere damage. All right, is that a f pass or a fail? Uh, pass. So two damage. Okay, so it takes two more fire damage, and it's just letting out pitiful howls as it lays <laughs> in the oil, the fire, the ground. Uh, the whole deal. Uh, behind it, you hear the very large footfalls of a very big boy. Um, 
the only person nearby that can see what the fuck is happening would be Astraeus. Astraeus, you look over and you see those two glowing eyes staring at you from the other side of the uh, the cavern entrance. All right. Whew. That brings us to Askilla. Still snoozing. All right. Oh, and I do need to give this uh, Yeti right here an opportunity, at least, to get the hell away from there so he's not burned to death. So this is his... Is it strength to break free, right, from... Uh, DC 12, yep. Entangle? Okay. But he's restrained. That doesn't affect saves. Oh, no, it's a strength check to break free, right? So, yeah, he's yeah. still he's still stuck. All right. Um, yeah, so he'll also take fire damage. So cue that up. Cue that shit up for me. He fails. He's going to take the full amount. All right. You are just roasting this Yeti uh, as it lays there trapped in the vines, covered in oil, ball bearings stuck in its fur. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Uh, Astraeus, what are you going to do? <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to... Some, like, <laughs> I'm gonna s- item interaction, quote unquote, haha. I'm gonna smack Philippicles across the face and yell snap out of it, but I'm just dashing away. Okay. All right. Uh, Phil, uh, saving throw, wisdom. Oh, uh, uh, it's it's me. It I, I changed it. It's okay, uh, you, you come to you come to you come to your senses, <laughs> and you, you look you look around at the absolute clusterfuck that's happening right here, and you see oh. most of your companions are over here. Um, you see that Reset is over there, um, but you do not see Talus at this time. I I would see Phil come to his senses and yell, Talus is falling. Here, Talus, I'll move you to a spookier map so that you can uh, feel like more uh, apart from everyone. There you go. Okay. I'm gonna run, run Phil. Bag. I'm gonna throw a buck. I'm gonna throw a bag of caltrops into this <laughs> dust over here. All right. <laughs> you think you think I don't have caltrops? Hold on. Hold on. Where, where are you at, Caltrops? I got the nastiest Caltrops. There we go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they're D4s. That's right. Oh, Ow. no. All right. How many spaces does it cover? Uh, 10 foot by 10 foot? I think. All right. Yeah. <laughs> EC 15 saving throw, or stop moving this turn and take one piercing damage. I would also say that they're probably going to be hard to spot um, inside of the Entangle spell. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, no. Five feet on a side. Uh, so, but, okay. but, I mean, they're big. They're going to step on them. I'm All right. It. All right. You chuck them down. All right. Now what? Um, oh, man. I got all these sleeping babies. Uh <laughs> <laughs> they're familiars. They can just stuff them into safe spots. Run. <laughs> I'm gonna look at and I'm gonna look ahead. I don't see Hypatia because there's all this going on. So I'm gonna grab Soul with my bonus action. <laughs> Alright, Soul fails automatically. You grapple her. Okay. I'm sorry, Skilla. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I got. Okay. Uh, this harpy with the flaming uh, claws sees you flying by. Um, it sees uh, Astraeus over there, though, and has noticed that Astraeus is surprisingly weak. Uh, it is going to swoop in and try to grab a hold of him. Oh, bitch, you didn't. All right. Uh, Harpy's going to roll a five. Oh, it's going to roll a five, huh? So it gets <laughs> a, so it gets a eight uh, altogether. So give oh, me for fuck's sake! Someone has lucky! Someone's got it. Lucky song is still happening. Redo it. Who has lucky? Who still has it? I do. Okay, roll a fresh one for me. You got to beat an eight. Ooh. Oh, okay. Uh, so she goes to grab you, um, but does not. Uh, so she is actually in melee with you right now. All right. Uh, Hypatia, you're up. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Um, seeing that everyone is kind of doing relatively okay, I hope Talos is okay. Um, I just feel like I could have moved more. I'm, uh, 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 I'll, uh, I'm gonna frostbite this chick. The one that just tried to attack, uh, Astraeus. Mm. Alright, uh, constitution save, here we go. Ah, uh, she passes. Okay. Well, it was something. I gave it a try. And one, two, three, four, five, six. And then, uh, sorry guys, I'm gonna bonus action Misty Step for another one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. No one blames you. <laughs> no apologies. <laughs> no, we want to get you. <laughs> no, someone's got to make it across this thing. All right, um, Sleepy Soul uh, and Anastasia. <sighs> Anastasia, this creature is in melee with uh, Astraeus, so she is roughly 10 feet above the bridge. Um, still, I guess I could do... She would be like, with me, right? I could do that. There we go. Um, yeah, so you're are you 10 feet above the bridge? Uh, no, I wasn't flying. Okay. Uh, yeah, so she's 10 feet above the bridge, which means as a 5-foot, squ you know, square entity, she does threaten you right now and Astraeus. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, I yeah. thought there was something mm -hmm. else weird. Um, um... She can take the opportunity to attack. I'm tired of this. Okay. All right, yeah, as you go past the creature, uh, she does lunge out with her flaming talons. One of them. Oh, shit. Come on. Okay. Oh, I'm going to re-roll it. I have my lucky. Okay. All right. Here comes the new advantage, one. So. Yeah, here comes the new one. Here we go. Uh, so a 19 for 10 plus a D4 fire. Okay. Uh, 13 damage. All right. Alright, um Ash. And then I'm gonna bonus action healing light myself. Oh, I didn't set it up to do more than three. Well let's just do three. Um I might as well use my lucky Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Anastasia, also give me a con check to see if you can maintain your. Yeah, no problem, no problem. All right. Anything else from Anastasia? Uh, no. I had to use my bonus action to heal myself, so. But I'll leave All this. Right. Where it's your at. one. Uh, you guys. Uh, at this point, if you don't have dark vision, um, you have no idea where Talos is at as he slowly drifts down into the ravine of the dead. Oh wait, I think it's actually called the Valley of the Dead. Yeah. No, sorry. The valley shrouded in mist. Cool. Oh, I forgot about my temp HP too. Dang it. All right. I'm gonna give myself three health. Why do I? You're gonna reroll my one d6. You don't have to. They've I mean, her turn's I, about to come up, and it's gonna end. So. I I literally have nothing oh, else. Oh, I, I see. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Cool. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> All right. Cool. So an extra five. All right, uh, NPCs and new rounds. Uh, they can't do any singing. They're just gonna do some dashing. Uh, let's see first and foremost if Karina can wake up from this nonsense. Uh, let's see. Why is it not opening? Oh, it's because I'm selecting the whole group. It doesn't know what character sheet to show me for that. <laughs> uh, all right, I know she's got a plus one. So here we go. Uh, yeah, she is still desperately trying to get at um, that one. Uh, she will attempt to uh, break free. Why? Mm, whatever. Uh, let's see. Good luck. Just, three three says three one, whole mouthfuls of her hair. Oof, she got an 18, though. Uh, Alright, versus his 14. Uh, yeah, she is going to tear free and uh, 
run to the edge. She gets a new saving throw as she tries to leap off to get to the harpy. Oof. Alright. Uh, she's going for it. Featherfall. Okay. <laughs> she uh, begins to descend slowly but, but swiftly, um, falling towards the ground. Alright. Uh, Jesus. The rest of them don't want to leave her? Oh, man. Um... I'm I'm going to yell at them. There's nothing you can do. Phil's going to have to fly down and get them. What? <laughs> <laughs> Did you not I... hear Valley of Death? Valley of Soul? <laughs> I... There... There... Can anyone else do anything? I have well, nothing. Alright, alright. Let's see. The, the Valley Shroud... Valley Shrouded in Misty Death Skeleton Specters uh, Shadowy Doom. There you go. That's, I think that's the full name of it. Um... Yeah, 500 feet down. It'll be fine. All right. On that note, uh, Team NPC has made it close to the end zone. They're feeling pretty good about how everything's going. Uh, over here, uh, we got Purple uh, Purple Lady. Uh, purple Lady is going to fly up to Astraeus and try and grab him. I don't like these, these harpies. You're not supposed to. <laughs> Some people loved harpies once, and it worked out really bad for them. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. mm. All right, here we go. That's an amazing oppose. Yeah, they are not able to grab you. Uh, you are now in melee with two harpies. I, I want to believe it's like he's he's uh, you know masculinely like fighting them off, but I just picture him like swatting <laughs> his hands above his head, like no, no. <laughs> all right. Uh... 16, keep in mind, since you were poisoned, you are rocking disadvantage on these. Oh, the other one. Oh, that's just not cool. Oh, no. Oh, All no! Right. Yeah, uh, the others cheer her on as she swoops overhead, grabs you by the head. It feels bad. Uh, flies over here and chucks you out into the abyss. You begin as to fall. As he falls, he yells out, I regret never learning Feather Fall! <laughs> Hang on. Oh, no. I'm sorry. You're too far away. You already, you already used your reaction, yeah. Oh, I did. Yeah, well, you're also too far away. Uh, I think you're going to fall uh, yeah, down, so let me get you onto your own section of the Valley Shrouded in a Mist and Death. Here we go. On the plus side, I'll get to see what's down there before Karina or Talon. Right? Wasn't the curiosity <laughs> just killing you? Yeah. All right. Uh, phrasing. Crazy. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, Talus, you continue to drift closer oh, to the you ground. You weren't that far from me. I might be able to get you. I'm going to ready action healing word for when I'm dead. Okay, fair, <laughs> fair. Um, so, Talus, uh, any action as you continue to drift towards the ground? Um, um, on, the, on the bright side, you can't see um, the source of your fear anymore. You don't see any more monstrosities. So give me a new wisdom saving throw. Um, see if you could shake off the fear. No, it's, it's all it's all a lot very scary right now. Fear fear sensors are overloaded. All right, um, so you're continuing to I drift. See, if I see uh, who fell, Is that... uh, Karina's falling, uh, but she's further up. And given how shrouded and mist everything is, um, and That's snow, visibility. Yeah, right, right, right. I'll have Peritos flying down towards me though. Okay. Through whistles trying to worry. Uh, reset to you. Uh, I'll use my action to equip my shield. And then I will move. Eight. And then I will bonus action step of the way. Okay. So I make it. I just make it there. All right. We need. Uh, uh, we need to discuss something very important right now. Um, when does Astraeus fall his six? He's falling. Like, yeah, my he, turn hasn't come up yet. He got right. thrown off the edge. Yeah. So he, he had his initial. He had his initial right fall. Now. He had his initial fall of sixty feet. So is he going to fall uh, another 60 feet right yeah, now before right, I right can now, even go? To yeah, right, right now he's falling another 60 feet during his turn. So what are you doing during your turn, Astraeus? 
Uh, uh... <laughs> but Probably... now, you have, now you have lots of people you can save, Philip Cleese. Like, there's like three people falling right now. Well, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, he literally just got thrown off the edge. So, like, right, he right. Fall, or does he fall on his initiative or the Harvey's initiative? He's going like... to fall on his initiative. The reason that Talus and the others are falling uh, on a Hypatia's is just because it's easier for me to track. I don't know. Because she's the one that cast the thing. I guess it should be I'm on their saying, turns. You, but, fall yeah. 60 feet a sec uh, you fall 60 feet in a round. Right, right, right. So it hasn't even been a round, full round yet. I haven't yeah. gone. So he, we'll say he's so, sixty feet. He's sixty feet down. That's all I need to know. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So stress. What are you gonna do? Um, me mechanically nothing. He's he's gonna be praying and okay. mentally cursing his elvish heritage for not being able to allow him to cast sleep on himself, so he doesn't have to watch himself smash. Okay. Rest. Fair enough. Uh, Phil, you're up. Yeah. So Astraeus is sixty feet. Away from me, plus uh, Pythagorean theorem, right? So, <laughs> dude, I'm really sorry. Well, there, there is no, it's... there is no Pythagorean theorem in Five E, so you okay, would just, yeah, okay. you just fly at him. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna fall, fly, start flying towards him, and I can't make it the full sixty feet. Yeah, but right? you're doing that dramatic action hero thing where you're like um, making your body a different shape so that you could fall faster than the person you're trying to rescue. Is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, I was gonna throw my grappling hook at him. So <laughs> you're gonna try well, to not... hit, hit him with the grappling hook? Yeah, uh, yeah I don't care if it pierces right. his skin. It, if I can, it's a uh, improvised weapon. Yeah, go ahead and give me an improvised weapon attack roll. Uh, right. How far do you fly with your uh, with your shiz? So I fly thirty feet. Okay, so and this is gonna be I this is gonna be it. at disadvantage. Uh, keep in mind that you technically can't reckless a ranged attack. Yeah, you yeah, can only yeah. reckless melee attacks. Okay. Well, so improvised weapon. So that's just strength plus proficiency, right? Nope, it's just strength. Oh, it's just it's, strength. Just strength. Yep. yep. Pressure's right. If I scroll down to, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happening? Can you ping it? A fourteen. Oh, there we are. Okay. Does a does a fourteen penetrate your armor class, Astraeus? I have an AC of eighteen. All right, you are well he protected. Can grab it. He could grab uh, it, maybe. Could I reaction try and catch it? With the reaction, go ahead and give me. Uh, either an acrobatics uh, or a, a slate of hands to see if you are fast enough to realize, oh shit, I just got oh, wow. God. <laughs> All right, uh, you grab hold of the grapple. Mitros provides for those who have faith. <laughs> Aw, I had all this damage waiting for you. Aw. <laughs> I right. was praying for a miracle, and I just <laughs> rolled a double nat twenty. All right, uh, you yeah, you which is the... important because you were poisoned at a disadvantage. <laughs> yeah, you grab the grapple and uh, just kind of hang from it. And Phil, there is a sudden as he um, kind of swings back and forth. You hold a, a baby phoenix under your arm, snoozing in your armpit, as with your other arm wrapped in rope. Uh, as we've established, the rope is the only clothes you wear. Um, you see that, and two loincloths, and two loincloths. Uh, Astraeus dangles from the grapple on the other side. Now that you're a little bit further down, you do see across the way uh, that Karina is also falling to her death, slowly, much slower than. Uh, yeah. She's floating to her. Yeah. I mean, technically, Featherfall and the falling that we did a bunch of math on some form to figure out are the same speed. It just happens that Featherfall gives you, like, hella shocks. So when you hit the ground, you're just, like, superhero landing. Um, but you are actually falling at the same pace that anybody else would be falling. So despite the name Featherfall, it should just be called superhero landing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. if you've ever skydived, it's scary as shit. So. Uh, all right, that is your turn, Phil. Um, it is the Harpy's turn. They are not happy about what you are doing um, at all, uh, but they do see that there are uh, some Yetis showing up, and a big Yeti at that. Uh, this one is going to fly towards Anastasia. Um, Talon's out. Uh, unfortunately... Uh, as her turn begins, 
the uh, pilot light on her claws it goes out. So the blessing of Hypatia has left her. Uh, it is, however, going to make two attacks against you. Here we go. Uh, first with its talons, and then with its claws. Yeah, All right. Okay, seven and nine. As she tears into you, Hypatia, you're up. Okay, as my action, I'm I'm going to poof steal it away to safety, and and then I'm going to run into the place. Okay. The flaming sphere drops. Okay. <laughs> All right. Did I skip the sweet uh, yetis this turn? I think I did. Uh, I'm such an asshole. All right. Um, there was so much else to keep track of. Soul, you're still snoozing. Anastasia. All right, I'm going to draw this force field around you, Hypatia, because you are safely inside the passage to Telemach. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, it's right there. Uh, oh, I'm not concentrating on that anymore. I make an attack at disadvantage if I try and hit her. Um, going to bonus action heal myself for 1d6 or that okay How far is Arena and Talus at this point? Uh, Talus is like 180 feet down. Uh, Karina, I believe, is 120 feet down. Okay. Um, I'm just going to take the opportunity attack again. Oh, damn. Okay. This is rigged. This is rigged. Okay, that's all the uh, it crit. Hits you for, it, it hits you for five as you uh, as you flee. Okay. All right, and I'll use the rest of my action to get inside the. Okay. Jeez. All right. Uh, this harpy over here uh, sees the big yeti is coming, and she does see that there are still people to mess with. Uh, so she's going to fly over here. And attack uh, Sweet Lorius, who's carrying the puppers. What? No! Right. <laughs> Three! Uh, the first attack misses, the second attack hits. Lorius takes damage. He lets out uh, a gasp of surprise. He thought the DM said that he would be safe on Team NPC. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. That brings us to Harpy 21. Harvey 21 sees that you are freeing people, and she doesn't like that, but she knows that you're a beefy boy, and that there's a beefier boy coming. Uh, but she does have an idea. Uh, she's going to fly over the top of you, Phil, and she's going to shake out some dander. Alright, go ahead and give me a constitution save. Pass this constitution save. Oh, <laughs> all right. Um, as the dander lands on you, your eyes grow heavy, and the wings on your uh, ankles start to slow down, and then you begin to free fall. And as you free fall, so too does Astraeus. You guys continue to fall. Uh, the bright side: you are still clutching adorable sleeping chicken under your arm, <laughs> and we're connected by rope. And you're connected by rope. <laughs> So that is also a thing that is so happening. That's the damage. Okay. <laughs> All right, Talus, you continue falling. <laughs> I've fallen to sleep so many times. <laughs> All right, re reset. Uh, you are down quite a few people, and there are two harpies picking on uh, the party. What do you do? Uh, I would have to come. Uh, when do they move? They don't. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, I'll move there. Okay. And I'm gonna tell um, Kira get Galorius to safety. We're we'll go inside and we'll just we just have to believe that they'll be okay. Her eyes shining with tears and excitement. She says, "Are you gonna do the thing?" Are you gonna fucking hold the line right now? Well, if if you go through quickly, then I won't have to do it for long. Oh, okay. Well, we'll just say that you yeah, held the line but, like a lot longer than you but did. But I am okay. I am going. All right. As you volunteer to hold the line, there is an absolute fucking diesel roar from the other side of the chamber. You see a billowing cloud of frost breath. Uh, come through the passageway, putting out the remnants of the burning oil and coating the two yetis that are on the ground in ice. Uh, this cold breath is a 30-foot cone that does 10d8 cold damage, uh, which is kind of hype. Uh, then stepping over uh, the frozen ground, the frozen bar... Uh, all that crap is this guy. He does, however, uh, have to make his save as he steps into uh, all this noise right here. So here we go. Uh, strength save. Uh, he passes. Uh, that is his turn, but he is in the fucking fight. <laughs> the two guys on the ground are, fro are don't, frozen. Don't forget his Caltrop save. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, we yeah. don't have to roll for the Caltrop. Okay, 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 okay. I got this open. I got this open. All right. Uh, as an action, you spread a bag of Caltrops to cover a side area that uh, DC 15 deck save or stop moving this turn and take one piercing damage. Damn. All right. As he comes <laughs> through like a fucking Final Fantasy boss, just baller as hell, he breathed I uh, ice bridge over all the other obstacles. He <laughs> just tears through the entangling vines like they're nothing one single caltrop goes into his pinky toe and you see one tear appear on his fucking eye one frozen icicle fucking drops from his eye as he steps on that one lego that you left there taking, and he takes one this, point of damage taking this damage reduces the creature's walking speed by 10 feet until All right. the creature regains at least one hip all right, you did it. He's, he's done. It's done. That's the that's the end of the fucking fight right there. <laughs> I'm gonna have to snapshot this real quick. Okay. It's so good. I really like. That was ridiculous. If, if you're a good artist, please could you uh, post it into the yeah there it is. I have it. Oh my god. <laughs> That's the only sign that he took any Caltrop damage is that one icicle tear down his fucking face. All right. It's like when Dad stepped on the Lego and tried to make pretend it didn't hurt. Oh yeah, you can tell that there's a billowing rage, like a just a, a rage building up inside of him, but he's not gonna show any pain. He's not gonna show any pain. That being said, Astraeus, you begin falling. You are tugging uh, a sleeping Philippocles along be behind you. The two of you begin <laughs> rocketing towards the ground. Uh, another sixty feet. What are you gonna uh... do? <laughs> um. Uh, smack him! Smack him! So you uh, are uh, down 120 I'm, I'm like, feet right now. I'm like 30 feet away from him with this rope. Uh, Throw uh, your you... spear! Don't, that's just, that's just <laughs> silly. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna <laughs> cast Chaos Bolt on him. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you cast Chaos Bolt. It has advantage? Oh, 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 mark? oh. oh. but you are... We, we got a long time to fall. Uh, you are free fall spinning. <laughs> And you just launch it, and it wah, it goes like the full 120 <laughs> feet, and there is a detonation tush, of energy <laughs> up in the air. My uh, my my uh, item interact. I'm gonna try to whip the rope so it hits him in the face or something. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. 
it's, uh, you know, it's yeah, as desperate I, as I'm falling, I'm doing sure, anything. Sure, sure, sure. The problem is he's so beefy and so strong that you are, you know, you're like rope whipping him and he's just kind of like cuddled up with uh, the, with the, the little ball of fire yeah. and yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. His beard ablaze. Yeah, the whole, the whole thing. <laughs> See, if it wasn't magical sleep, I was going to thaumaturgy myself and yell at him <laughs> to wake up. With my three times the the sound brewing voice, but, but if it wasn't magical sleep. You would wake up immediately when you start falling. Like <laughs> uh, Phil, you are you are dreaming, and it is it is nice. You just kind of having a having a good snooze, having dreaming a good snooze. of golden apples. Yeah. Uh, in your dream, uh, your sister lays on a pile of golden apples. Uh, no, the there's no prime. yeah. There's no rules, and nobody can say anything about what's going on. And everything is really hot. Very hot. Like your beard's on fire hot. <laughs> um, all right. That brings us to... Uh, Harpy number 12. Harpy number 12 is going to try its best. Uh, it is going to fly up and attack uh, Lorius. So here we go. Two attacks for Lorius. Claws and Talons. Oh my, Lorius is hit uh, by both and bloodied. All right, Hypatia, you're up. I'm, I'm, I'm safe. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Unless you'd like to go back in. Otherwise, you could I... cheer from the sidelines. I mean, I guess I could, I could launch a fireball. Yeah, launch a fireball at one of them birds. Yeah, yeah. go for it. Sure. Here's hoping not another net. Leap one of those asshole birds. Go. Make them fall for once. I didn't. I didn't All right. prepare it today. All right. That bring, well, you thought you were going to be facing undead. I got you. I did. Yeah, so, it makes like, sense. I was makes all sense. ready to web things. Uh, you could web the crap out of things. Soul, uh, sleeping, Anastasia. Are you, you going to stay in there? Are you going to launch a spell out there? Are you just going to see how it plays out? Team NPC is going to disengage and get the fuck out of there. All right. Oh, uh, sorry. I was, I was muted. So go, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, before she leaves, she she calls out one last lucky song to everybody. No, wait. She can't because they're going to disengage. Never mind. Okay. So they just disengaged and left. All right. No lucky song. That brings us to High Mountain Harpy. All right. It's going to fly up to reset. Uh, did I not do anything? I don't know. I don't know. Are you doing anything? Uh, I'm really afraid to roll a one, so I'm just gonna heal myself. Okay. Uh, fair enough. This one rushes forward to attack Reset. Uh, Reset. It's I gonna readied. try to. All right, go for it. Ready to action. Yeah. Oh, that definitely hits. Uh, with a squawk of outrage, it's gonna try to grab you and throw you off the edge. Give me an acrobatics or athletics. It only got an eight. All right. Um, you managed to pull yourself free. Uh, 21 down there in the pit. Uh, I would say at this point, with that guy appearing and everything else that's going on, I'm going to say that that one is going to just hover around looking for opportunities to, to cause fuckery. Talus, slow descent. You're approaching your destination eventually. Uh, reset, you're up. All right, I'm going to stab this bird. Okay. Uh, yeah, you stab that bird. And then I'm going to bash it with my shield twice. Fury okay. Blow. Uh, second one is a one. Okay, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, 14 doesn't hit. The second uh, shield bash is a one. Uh... Oof. As you go and hit it, the harpy who's been trying to grab you this whole time, uh, you hear a tearing sound. Your backpack splits open. Everything inside scatters to the floor. Wow. Is she over the cliff? I can't see. There you go. Your pack splits open, emptying its contents to the floor. No, she is in the middle of the bridge, but okay, pick, okay. picking all that stuff up is going to be more than one item interaction. Uh, so that would... Okay. I need to figure out what was in my backpack. All right. Um, I will. Yeah, I will item interact 
to pick up the short bow. Okay. And just strap it on my back. All right. And I will move back. Okay. It tries one last time to uh, take you out. Terrible attack roll. All right. You make it into the safety of <laughs> safety of uh, the necropolis at Telemach. At this point, big boy here daintily walks on his sore toe uh, out onto the bridge. He looks and sees that you have entered the cursed place and he roars his outrage. The harpies seeing him uh, scatter and in frustration, he just kind of beats his fist against the bridge, which cracks just a bit under his relentless tantrum. Uh, he so wanted to get you guys after you embarrassed him last night. Whew. On that note, we're going to stop for the night. And we will figure out what happens to our free-falling friends uh, next week. What height are we at? Or how many feet? Uh, you are currently 120 feet down um, at this point. Uh, out of 500. Okay. Okay. Yep. And your uh, your boy Talos is 250 or sorry 240 feet down, and your girl is 180 feet down. But you are all falling in different areas of these valleys of mist, so it should be interesting to see how that turns out. Uh, more than likely, next session we will do if you if the rest of the party doesn't decide to go after the people who have fallen, we'll do like a split uh, party thing where we kind of go between and see what everybody ends up doing so I feel wow. like I would I would stay in New Skill to help so and Anastasia I, you can you can resummon soul yeah yeah yeah. she didn't yeah, die yeah. you can also go yeah. into soul's senses and be yeah. asleep yeah. in both parties at once oh man okay so there you go the entrance to the necropolis of Telemach Wow. And we just thought we'd have to deal with the lich. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry if I met it too much. Oh, uh, I mean, when when things get scary, uh, you know, I get it. Uh, your your characters hang out with each other all the time. When you guys are out living your real life, uh, your characters, you know, they have days and days, weeks and weeks that they hang out and travel together. Um, you do know about each other's powers. I think the the pushing it past the limit was it's a brand new ability for him. Um, you don't know how the whole thing works kind of deal. So it would have been, you know, uh, a little bit, a little bit over the top there, but um, mm -hmm. still it all sort of worked out. Nobody's dead. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, announcements. Um, good God. Uh, there's D and D every day this week. Um, there's uh, Acquisition Incorporated tomorrow night. Um, Anastasia's running a game Wednesday night. There's Skull and Shackles back on after a two-week hiatus Thursday night as they continue to try and get their captain promoted to free captain, which is a big deal in that campaign setting. Uh, Friday is uh, Storm King's Thunder. They just killed the Giant Lord, and they're getting ready to do some extremely ridiculous stuff if you... Uh, watch the prep it is pretty crazy what they're getting up to next uh, Saturday is some some game is happening Lakatha. Saturday Lakatha uh, Rising is happening day, yeah, yeah and time. then Sunday is Double Salt Marsh and then we'll be back here next Monday so D&D &D forever um, yeah there'll be a Hero Quest game next week and um, I'd like to start planning uh, extra life for June. I know that the world is still kind of crazy, but I feel like what better time um, when people are already stuck at home on the computer anyways to do some extra life stuff. I am debating whether to do a 24-hour marathon uh, in the Caves of Chaos or to do 24 hours of one-shot adventures where everybody who wants to run them, we all run them during the same time and we invite strangers from the strange internet to um donate to charity to participate uh or maybe both i don't know um but it might be kind of cool to you know run a bunch of games and uh do that or just kind of you know uh 
do that. So we'll have to see where things are at it's closer to that. I'm going to be like mid, mid May. I'm going to decide if I could commit to that or not. But if anybody else, uh, again, wants to run games on the server or get like a sub channel set up uh, for a group, we have a lot of those popping up now. Um, so just let me know. Anybody else? Have, oh, and there's a build contest for the most wholesome D&D character. So if you can make the most wholesome D&D character, um, that is the current build contest. So does anybody have any other announcements? Uh, I have a thing. Um, June 1st, I go back to my normal like work schedule. So we'll have to oh, go back to normal D&D schedule. Only three fair, hours. Fair, fair, fair. Okay. But not till June 1st. So. Okay. Okay. We got, we got time. We got time. Um, I feel like we get so much done. <laughs> we do, do. Yeah. Um, yeah, my campaign's moving forward. I've learned from these four hour, this four hour block. I'm definitely going to move to the two hour on break, um, two hours, and then yeah, it seems like a good good fit. <clears throat> um, yeah, that's yeah. From else? our son, I swear, it's like every time we want to keep playing, but like. We hit that three mark, and yeah. everybody's playing extra games on Sundays now too. So, yeah, so that's why from the get go, I'm gonna my next campaign will be set to two two hour uh, two two hour blocks um, with a break in between because I think that's probably the most pleasant. Because even the times where I just have sat here staring at the screen without my headset on, it does like kind of let me come back after that 15 minutes and feel kind of refreshed. So yeah, mm-hmm. breaks breaks are apparently kind of cool. So, but not cool in a three hour game. If your DM's trying to run a break in three hour game, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, anybody else? Anything? Going once? Going twice? Nope. All right. All right. Enjoy uh, the rest of your week, and I'll see you around the Discord then. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. All right. Later. I was really hoping that the grapple hook would have pierced your chest. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just holding on to your hunk of meat. That's uh <laughs> that's disturbing. <laughs> it would have been so funny.